please be mindful of that to make sure that what, whatever you say is uh, well thought out. And I would ask you to be cautious that when your microphone is on, often it will pick up uh, what you might be saying or whispering to the person next to you. Um, and I've been caught on that myself, so just be careful. Turn your mic off when you're not speaking. Uh, and please wait to be recognized to speak. These are executive, this is an executive session all day, and <clears throat> it's liable to go quickly, which is a good thing. Um, and uh, we're making some, some hard decisions rather than just listening in the hearing mode. We're going to make some hard decisions, and let's all understand that they're not all going to be the way we want them to go. So in some cases, you just have to swallow hard and move on. Okay. We're going to open the executive session. Today, this is the Municipal and County Government Committee. And today is February 22nd, 2022. 2-22-22. We're going to start off uh, with House Bill 1026. And we have about... Ten bills to exec, and then we'll call it a day. And then we're going to do this all again tomorrow. We're going to have a, a full day of exec sessions tomorrow. If anybody needs to be excused for any reason, go to the bathroom or whatever, uh, let me know, and uh, the ranking member and I may have a discussion about how we may want to take a recess or not to give you time to go and come back. Not, we're, we're not uh, planning to wait for someone to leave, take a quick vote, and, get, and gain the advantage. Uh, that's not, that's not uh, in today's plan. So. You ruined my whole strategy. Yes, right. <laughs> right. Okay, uh, House Bill 1026. This was the... Uh, this is relative to, to having the proper budget information uh, on a spreadsheet provided to the Budget Committee. Is there a, uh, a motion for this bill? I will make a motion out to pass. Motion is made out to pass. Is there a second? Okay, motion, motion's been made out to pass on 1026, and it's been seconded. Is there any discussion on this bill? Seeing no discussion. Mr. Chair, just one more question. Yes, go ahead. The bill is as presented? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. All right, seeing uh, no further discussion, uh, I'll ask the uh, clerk to take a roll. Okay, HB 1026 ought to pass. Uh, Vice Chairman Piamonte? Yes. Clerk votes yes. Representative Tripp? I vote yes. Representative Guthrie? Representative Rosales? Yes. Representative Rhodes? Yes. Representative Melvin? Yes. Representative Villa? Yes. Representative Power? Yes. Representative Chairlevin? Yes. Representative Gilman? Yes. Representative Majori? Yes. Representative Stavis? Yes. Uh, Representative Mangaputi? Yes. 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 Okay. Representative Van. Yes. Representative Clee. Yes. Representative Gallagher. Yes. Representative Rung. Yes. And Chairman Dolan. Yes. OTP passes nineteen to zero. Okay. And uh, Without objection, I'll, I'll be moving that to the consent calendar. And uh, Representative Piamonte, you're going to do the uh, report? Okay. All right, the next bill is um, House Bill 1055, which has to do with property tax exemptions for individuals with disabilities and those who are deaf or severely hearing impaired. 
Uh, Representative Ayer, do you have a motion? Okay, and let's. Uh, all right, let's take the amendment first. So, uh, is your motion to uh, to OPP the amendment? Okay, and who's seconding that? Okay. So this first vote here on 1055 is on the amendment only. And the amendment we said was uh, 2022-0139H is in hotel. Any discussion on that amendment? Mr. Chair? Yes. A question about the procedural. We are just taking up the amendment without the bill as OTP yeah. first. Take up, we'll take up the amendment first. Uh, un understanding that it's supporting uh, uh, an underlying bill. Okay. I'm, I'm confused with the procedure, but that's fine. Representative Trelevin, could you turn off your mic? Yes, sir. It's been a while since uh, I've had to live up here. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have a question about the amendment. It starts with number four on line nine, and I'm looking for that in the bill, and I see that number four is the effective date. So is this is this number four to replace that? And just not quite sure where this amendment comes in the bill. a good question. Uh, does anybody have any thoughts on that, Richard, uh, Representative Lascellas? Yes, just above that, if you look above it, it says amend a bill by inserting after section three the following and renumbering the original section four to read as five. Got it. Thank you, Representative Lascellas. Yes, uh, Representative Gilman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, one of the concerns that we had had was the one-year uh, residency. Has that not changed? Uh, I believe it's been, it has been changed from five years to one year. Thank you. Yes, Representative Gallagher. Uh, I'm not seeing the changing it from five to... Um, yeah, the part about it changing from five years to one year. That was in the original bill, correct? And then the amendment doesn't do anything to address that. So it would just stay as being reduced from five years to one year? Yes. Okay. Yes, Representative Majapudi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my recollection was uh, there are three bills that are all tax credit ones. Yes. And my uh, note says, is there a way to uh, connect or combine the three and also for fiscal note on three for the impact? So any update on that? No, the, right now, the way we've set them up is that we're gonna have to take one, each individually and I believe they're all ch they're all have are going to be proposed to be changed from a, sh a, a longer time period to a shorter time period, all, all the same. And uh, in our discussion, we can certainly uh, advocate one versus the other. You know, staying at five, going to one year, whatever. How how you feel about that? But we're not they're not linked together. And a further yes. cl clarification. How about the fiscal note for this, the impact? It's a tax credit. These are, um, I'll ask the clerk to make a note of that. I, I believe that that's not required, but we'll make a note and check. Okay. Yes? Yes. Thank you. Uh, when we, first considered this, um, I think part of our discussion was the fact that many municipalities or municipalities have the flexibility 
uh, at this point uh, that they can do essentially what this bill is asking for. And I think a large part of our objection was that residential or that the residency requirement, uh, which I do think we'll have discussions and other amendments that we have coming up here, which changed it to three. Um, I still think that I am, I, I see some improvement with this amendment, but the fact that it doesn't change the residency requirement or changes it to one uh, gives me cause to, to vote against this, given that in part of the testimony we heard that the uh, sponsor of the bill thought even three was arbitrary. So if three was arbitrary but is the standard, then one seems even more arbitrary because there's no basis. So I'm, I'm inclined to vote against the amendment um, given that municipalities will still have the right to do what this bill is a little trying to allow them to do. Thank you. Any other comment about Go ahead. Uh, I believe this is a, not a tax credit. This is a tax exemption. So the, the impact is not going to be quite as uh, uh, large as uh, a tax credit would be. So Good point. Any other comments on uh, 1055? Yes, Representative Klee. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, my only concern is that while this is just a tax credit, every um, dollar that we save from any single group gets passed on to other groups. Um, and my concern is that knowing all these bills that are coming forward, we're heading down a slippery slope. I can tell you that I, um, I was on a committee last session, not last year, um, as the uh, chair of um, state fed um, relations and, and Veterans Affairs, and we had a veterans bill that was similar to um, that particular one was a credit, I agree. But we've been doing year after year, we continue to do these things, and my concern is that we really are passing the burden on to someone else, whether it be by reducing their tax liability through a credit or through reducing their assessed value. Um, we keep saying we want to get more and more young people into our um, state, and we're doing everything we can to stop that by happening, by adding to their uh, real estate burden. So for that reason, I, while I feel guilty saying no to this, I think I'm going to have to uh, uh, pass. Thank you. Representative Manjapudi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, having worked with... Uh, this population for over 30 years as a therapist and seeing how uh, their lives are impacted. One year residency is too short for somebody in this predicament where, you know, they're trying to figure out where they get the services, where they can settle down. And if they have to keep moving from one community to the other and also it's a lot of effort. So one year, just giving one year residency requirement that gives them a false hope of being able to apply for something. And by the time they are able to get that, it may not be the community that they want to uh, be in. So, you know, it takes a little more. And I, I am all for supporting this, but I think the time frame and the way it's worded is not really beneficial to this uh, group, very group we are trying to help. And with that, I will vote against it. Okay, uh, just as a reminder, we are voting on the amendment to HB 1055, which is an exemption for the blind. Yes, Representative Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I apologize. This may not be germane to the amendment. But I just noticed something that I didn't notice before, which makes me question some technical aspects of how this bill might be or might not be enforced, which is the communities typically only assess property values every five years. Therefore, somebody who's lived in a property for one year or even three years, it would be difficult, if not impossible, and it might cause a tremendous amount of work for assessors in towns and cities to go back and figure out, well, what is the true value of this residence? Right. The, the, uh, as I understand it, the, 
the towns are required required to uh, reevaluate every as a minimum every five years, but they can do it more frequently if asked to, or if they see market forces, or if someone puts in a, a request for an abatement. I realize that I just pointed out as a could be a, a, a source of a problem for the bill, and and and, and because of those technical problems and because of the downshifting of property taxes that some people may not have to pay should this bill pass is those will get downshifted to other people in the community. I, I will need to vote against this. Thank you for the input. Thanks. Uh, any other further compliment, uh, rather, input on the uh, amendment? We are voting on the amendment. Okay, the amendment House Bill 1055 uh, basically changes it from a uh, five-year uh, exemption to a one-year exemption. All right, uh, I'll ask the uh, clerk to take a roll. Okay, adopt amendment 2022-0139H. Vice Chairman Piamonte? Yes. Clerk votes yes. Representative Tripp? I vote yes. Representative Guthrie? Yes. Representative Lasalas? Yes. Representative Rose? Yes. Representative Melvin? Yes. Representative Vea? Yes. Representative Power? Yes. Uh, Representative Trelevin? No. Uh, Representative Gilman? No. Representative Majori? No. Representative Stavis? No. Representative Mangaputi? No. Representative Van? No. Representative Klee? No. Representative Gallagher? No. Representative Ron? No. Chairman Dolan? Yes. The amendment passes 10 to 9. Okay, I would ask that uh, Representative Ear write the uh, committee report on this. I'm sorry, what? Oh, we haven't done the bill yet. CTL, CTL. Okay, so the amendment uh, passed 10 to 9, so now uh, we're back to the, uh, the original bill, 1055 as amended. Uh, do I have any further discussion on that? As amended, yes. Representative Gilman. Well, I agree that uh, the intent of this is very good. It's time to raise the exemption for p people in need. Um, I do have a problem with the one-year um, residency, uh, and I um, I'm also concerned about the downshift of the cost to peop the very people that we're trying to attract to the state. Thank you. Any further discussion on the on the uh, on the bill, Representative McDonald? Mike is on. Representative Majapudi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, for the same reasons that my colleague to my right uh, mentioned, and also having worked with this group. I know this is a very well intended, but it's going to create a lot more confusion and um, miss um, wrong expectation of people who are moving and families with uh, individuals with disability who are moving into the state will have with, uh, you know, discrepancy between one-year, five-year assessment and tax uh, credit or tax um, diff exemption. So I think there'll be more confusion, more um, uh, issue with the process. So with that, I would uh, vote against it and uh, hope that next term we'll have a better, well-thought-out bill. Thank you. Seeing no further comments, uh, I'll ask Representative Ayer if you want to make a motion to OTP as amended. And is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Mr. Clerk, if you would take a roll. Uh, OTP as amended on House Bill 1055. Uh, Vice Chairman Piamonte? Clerk votes yes. Representative Tripp? I vote yes. Representative Guthrie? Yes. 
Representative Rosales? Yes. Representative Rhodes? Yes. Representative Melvin? Yes. Representative Villa? Yes. Representative Power? Yes. Representative Chairlovin? No. Representative Gilman? No. Representative Majori? No. Representative Stavis? No. Representative Mangaputi? No. Representative Van? No. Representative Klee? No. Representative Gallagher? No. Representative Ryan? No. Chairman Dolan? Yes. Ought to pass this amendment passes uh, 10 to 9. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Clark. I, I would ask uh, Representative Ayer if you would write the committee report. The next bill we're going to look at is uh, House Bill 1056, uh, uh, dealing with veterans' tax credits. Mr. Chair? Yes. Just asking if there won't be any minority report on this, because it's 10 to 9. Right, there'll be, there'll be a minority report, okay. but that'll be up to the uh, ranking member to make that final. Okay, report. thank you. We'll decide that, Mr. Chair. Um, hopefully we'll get back to you tomorrow with everybody who's doing minority reports or, or reports from the Democrat side. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so back to uh, 1056. This is uh, a bill relative to veterans' tax credits. Uh, Representative McDonald, do you have a, a motion to make on this? Yes, I'll make a motion of uh, ought to pass. Mr. Chair, quick question. Sorry. It, there's an amendment to, isn't there an amendment to 1055? Uh, 1056. Uh, if there is, I don't have one. Do so 0498 was to 1055? Yes. Wait. Zero one three nine eight. So zero four nine eight, which says it was to ten fifty five, is not is not applicable here. That was another amendment that went with ten fifty five. Okay, yeah, I, I don't have okay. that amendment. All right, my apologies. Okay, so we're back to uh, Representative McDonald. Just made a motion to OTP for uh, Bill ten fifty six. Is there a second to that? Representative Lascellas makes a second. Is there any discussion on that bill? Yes, Representative Klee. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, once again, I, I, in this particular one, they're just um, um, putting the minimums and uh, the maximums. The issue here is those um, towns or cities that have the um, 50 minimum now we'll have to push it up to 200, and it's going to have an effect on them. Um, th personally, the town that I come from, this will not have an effect on, um, but we're also pushing the 750 up to 900, which does put pressure from municipality to municipality. And once again, I just feel that we're just passing the burden on, um, and, I'm, and I'm quite concerned um, who is going to be taking these minimums. So thank you. Representative Manjapudi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, you know, my concern um, adding to Representative Klee's is um, smaller communities are going to share the burden and uh, larger cities uh, like ours uh, that I come from already provides a lot of um, support and, uh, but it will affect the high end um, uh, where it goes from 750 to 900. And, um, you know, with that, I will have a harder time uh, supporting it. And I do understand this will have, you know, if the current thing exists and more uh, female veterans are able to enroll mm -hmm. in the existing current one, and there's, then there's an even distribution of uh, veterans across the state with all the communities share it, it would be helpful. So um, with that, I would uh, not be able to support it. Okay, thank you for your input. Uh, 
Uh, I'd like to point out that this is an enabling bill, and uh, the towns that are interested in uh, providing the tax credit can do so if they want. Uh, I do agree that uh, the minimum is being increased from $50 to $200, but uh, as was presented during the testimony, uh, the $50 is from the Civil War. I think it might be time to increase the, the minimum to uh, something that's a little more 2000-ish. Uh, so uh, with that in mind, I uh, will uh, support this bill. Thank you. Representative Manchuri. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm going to, I think we'll be hearing this a few times, but uh, I agree that something from the Civil War should probably be updated, but with that should have the fiscal analysis that shows us what the impact is going to be. Um, with all due respect, this bill should have had a fiscal note to it. Um, we understand the process that that would have to go through, but when we have to think about the impact that this will have or could have, uh, those of us familiar with municipal budgeting, we always have to budget for worst case scenario, and I don't consider this worst case, but you have to consider what will the impact be statewide since we're thinking about this. And, and we could have done that, you know, that homework is possible to do for DRA, which is why if we can do it, I think this should have had a fiscal note to it. So if somebody asks me what's the impact, I could say, I don't know. And I, and I can't go back to people and say, I don't know, when I know the information was available. So I, I have to vote against. Thank you. Um, another question, uh, Mr. Chair. You know, we all heard uh, the governor's state of the state. And uh, if there's a huge uh, veterans campus being uh, raised in um, Franklin, $100 million, and uh, this would be a good opportunity for town of Franklin to look at how it's going to impact or how it benefits. And, you know, seems like that would be a great uh, opportunity to look at how that uh, pans out before we make a statewide uh, change. Yes, Representative Tripp. Uh, I hate to, to repeat myself, but once again, this is an enabling bill. I, I think since it is an enabling bill and it can be uh, enabled at different values since uh, the, the uh, uh, value is changing from 750 to 900, uh, it, it's, there's going to be variation. Uh, since it is, once again, an enabling bill, uh, not every town will uh, uh, adopt it. It's an interesting thought that you could uh, produce a uh, fiscal note for this, but uh, there's a number of unknown variables here which would make it very difficult for it to be anywhere accurate. Thank you. Yeah, let, let me add in that uh, I know in my particular town, way that the uh, governing body is in implementing these things is um, as they look at the, the, the financial ability to absorb this cost, they're, they're taking these, these uh, uh, tax credits up by $50 a year to kind of phase it in as opposed to uh, take it all at once. Yes, Representative Tree. I think Representative Stavis was before me. Oh, Representative oh, wait, Stavis. Thank you. Representative Clee and Mr. Chair. Um, my understanding from the clerk is that if a committee wishes to see a fiscal note, that is a matter that can be voted upon at the executive session. You, you're very, that's very true. Therefore, what I'm proposing for your consideration, since we have a raft of bills to exec today that deal with the specific issue of tax exemptions and tax credits, that we consider taking a vote on whether these particular bills require fiscal notes in order for us to responsibly cast a vote in support or not of them. Okay. Just a uh, question of procedure. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is enabling legislation that would have to be passed by a town through, in the case of, in my case, a warrant article. 
So the impact, the fiscal impact on the state would would not there would be no fiscal impact on the state. It would be on the individual town, correct? Correct. That's what we'd be trying to determine. Representative Cleave? I'm going to ask you. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Was there someone in front? Oh, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Um, two things. This, this is, is, in fact, enabling legislation. However, those that already have it must abide by this or they're going to have to repeal um, this, um, these credits. They would actually have to take them away or they're going to have to abide by going from $50 to $200. There's also another um, added thing in here that um, the, the term not less than 90 days on active service has been struck. Um, I don't think that would truly take a whole lot of individuals that would fall into that category, but that also does add to the the numbers that would um, would qualify for the uh, for the credit. But as as enabling, we we talk about that the community has to vote in order to have it. However, if they've already have it, then they have to go from they have no choice in it. They have to go from the fifty to the two hundred. Um, so their choice is going to be we stop it. As far as the fiscal note is, it would be a fiscal note local. So it would be an FNL, not a, just a regular fiscal note um, because it does affect. The truth is it doesn't affect the municipalities per se, but it affects the taxpayers within the municipality as they have to pick up the burden. So, for instance, the city of Nashua or the town of Merrimack and so on, they're not going to be their budgets aren't going to be affected, but their residents will be affected by this. So, thank you. Representative Power. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Representative Klee made the point to that, that I was raising my hand to make, and that is while this is in fact le enabling legislation, there are municipalities who have, which have already adopted this. So if this were to pass, then this would be, um, they would have to abide by it, by the, the the, the fiscal uh, changes. Okay. Uh, Representative Stavis, do you, do you want to have another whack at this? Um, could I make a your, motion? Your microphone is on. That's why I said that. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, well, it, would it be in order to make a motion to request a fiscal note? I think we need to uh, uh, dis disposition the motion we have, and then we can make additional motions. Then we can come back with an, a special motion. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, would it be in order for the this current uh, motion on the table be withdrawn? Then the other motion can be made. Okay, any motion can be withdrawn. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes. I mean, if, if we do vote on the motion on the ta table on the bill, in other words, then the need for a fiscal note would be moot. Well, because I, we wouldn't have the information. Be, I understand. I, I, what I'm going to allow is that uh, if the motion passes, then I'm going to open the floor up to see if anybody wants to make a motion to add a fiscal note to any of these bills. And uh, that will be up to the um, the committee that, the, that has the uh, power to do that to either take it up or not take it up. Okay, so where we are, uh, yes, where is Representative Rowe? Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Rowe, um, my challenge is that my vote on, on this bill would be dependent on the fiscal note. If there is a, 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 a large, in my opinion, a large uh, tax hit that yeah. property tax owners and towns would have to take for this, that would influence my vote. So it's difficult to, to vote OTP without having 
an understanding of the tax implications for the communities that already have this credit. I understand, but we're, we're in the voting mode now, so it's, we can't go backwards. Who? Uh, Representative Tripp? Uh, I was going to say that there, there would be no uh, tax implication, but uh, because it's primarily a tax shift, it being a tax credit, but uh, uh, I'm going to have to withdraw that statement because the, the increase from 50 to $200 is a definite uh, tax impact. So uh, I'm corrected. Thank you. And I'm, I'm looking on the, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm looking, you know, as we did before on, on DRA, there's a 33 page report that, that has all of the towns listed with what they already have. This information is not hard to get. I would not be, want to be the one to be responsible for saying this is the impact. It just seems that DRA, and I don't know who makes those decisions when the bills are, are, are first assigned, but that's the information that we, that, that we are hoping to get from this. Um, may be negligible, maybe you know, may, maybe completely negligible, but there will be a shall in this. I, I just we I'm hoping for, as we've heard before, full disclosure so that we can be confident in our decision. So without the fiscal note, I'm going to vote against. It's not because I want to vote against the veterans in any way, shape, or form, but I need to know that I've done my due diligence. Thank you. Thank you. I, I am confident that because it's an enabling piece of legislation. The DRA's position is going to be that there is no fiscal impact because the town is going to have to choose to implement or not. And if they choose not to implement, then there's zero uh, impact. And it would be very difficult for DRA to calculate the financial impact if it's going to be as variable as the Warren article that appears in each community. Yeah. Yes, Representative Vance? Thank you, Chairman, except for the fact that towns which already have this tax exemption will be required to go to the larger sum. So while it is enabling, it is also compelling for towns that already have the exemption. Okay. Representative Stavis? Yeah, I would just like to go back to um, the time when we heard these bills. And I made a, sp a special mention of the fact that none of them had fiscal notes. And I believe um, the clerk made a note or said he would make a note of that. And so I would again put forward a motion that before we make a decision that has significant or maybe not significant, but we just don't know, fiscal impact on the state and or its taxpayers that we have the information at hand to help us make that decision. I, I hear what you're saying, but that motion is not in order at, at this time. Yes, Representative Majapudi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have in my notes from that public hearing, 48 communities out of 250 odd communities are providing less than $200 uh, dollar tax credit 17 communities offer 750 tax credit, just the two ex, uh, ends of the bookends, and this is from the assessor of uh, Hudson. So this, at least looking at this, is 65 communities are going to be impacted. Uh, you know, and it, what percentage of it? At least 25% uh, of the communities or a little more than at 25% of the communities. So knowing that these many communities are going to be impacted, I, you know, doing our due diligence, I think having a fiscal note would help me to make that decision saying that I've done everything I can, understanding and voted on it. And I think we need to do our due diligence. And Thank that, you. I would request that. Mr. Thank Mr. Clerk, you just remind us the status we are in the discussion of this bill. Are we at an are we at OTP of ten fifty six or are we still on the amendment? Still on uh, there there's was no, no amendment. amendment. There's no amendment, right? It's OTP ten fifty six. Okay, thank you. Okay, any further discussion? Is the motion motion to retain it uh, in the order or no? OTP. We don't we, we don't have the, the motion to retain would be not in order. 
Okay, uh, Mr. Clerk, would you call the call the vote? Mm -mm. Okay, the motion is OTP on House Bill 1056. Uh, Vice Chairman Piamonti? Yes. Clerk votes yes. Representative Tripp? I vote yes. Representative Guffey? Representative Lasalas? Yes. Representative Rhodes? Yes. Representative Melvin? Yes. Representative Ayer? Yes. Representative Power? Yes. Representative Chair Levin? No. Representative Gilman? No. Representative Majori? No. Representative Stavis? No. Representative Megapudi? No. Representative Van? No. Representative Klee? No. Representative Gallagher? No. Representative Rung? No. And Chairman Dolan? Yes. Uh, motion passes 10 to 9. Okay. Uh, uh, Representative McDonald, are you going to uh, write the uh, committee report? Yes. All right. At this point, I'm going to entertain a motion uh, regarding uh, having the Finance Committee uh, review any number of these bills for uh, a fiscal note requirement. Anyone want to, want to make that motion? I will make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And uh, is there a second? I'll second it. Or Davis is seconding it. Representative uh, Gallagher, you have some commentary? Um, so just to clarify, um, you said for any number of these bills, which of them specifically are we requesting fiscal notes for? We're going to go back to Representative Lasellis to see uh, when he's made his motion. Which what, what does he want it to apply to? I, w I would think, Mr. Chairman, that we should take them up e each individual bill and uh, for in, uh, this particular uh, bill to, to have a fiscal note on it and then at the completion of each bill to say whether we want a fiscal note or not. All right, so the, so the motion, as clarified, is uh, on 1056 relative to veterans tax credit. Uh, and the, the motion is to add a, a fiscal note to alert the Finance Committee to review this for mm -hmm. a financial impact to the community. Yes, sir. Representative Majuri. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate, uh, I certainly appreciate that that's the direction uh, that we want to go. Clearly, we've heard that. I just... I'm unclear on process. Getting a fiscal note versus sending this to a second committee for all intent and purpose. Um, I'm not saying I'm against what we want to do. I just want to make sure we're doing it the right way. I, I, and I have no idea. So, because this couldn't be a second committee bill, could it? Uh, no. Okay. And to get that clarity, too, because we might have the same question. I think we're going to have the same question on a couple of other bills. So whatever the process is, I think, I think you might have some support. Why don't I do this? Why don't I take a, a short recess, and we'll get some clarity on the process. How's that sound? Okay, we're going to be in. Uh, uh, before I do that, um, we had a motion on uh, 1056, and that motion passed, right? Okay, so so we're at the point where, uh, just on the calendar here, we're at the point where we're, we're going to start HB 1057 shortly. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to get some process direction. And so let's take a recess for uh, 10 minutes. Decided at an executive session, um, right? can't be decided before that. You know, if, if it hasn't come through with one already, to a get a vote for it at the executive session, which is why I made my motion. Right. Um, 
I don't think sending it to another committee is the way it's done. I think it's we the buck stops with us. You know, we have the fiscal note, or we vote to request a fiscal note, and then we vote again on the bill based on the information we have. But I think sending it to another committee. So, is so not your enough. thought is Paul's direction is that we would vote in a fiscal note yes. while it's here, yes. and then we revote to decide yes. whether we want to. IPL or yes. OTP to yes. go with the fiscal note? Yes, it's, it's up to us. Okay. It's that, the that's, that's, easier. that's easier than what I was going to Yeah, do. yeah. So I that's... Gonna, I was going to call him and he's probably going to tell me the same if thing. If you want me to show you the email I got no, no, from no, him. No, no, I can help you. Okay. I didn't believe him. <laughs> <laughs> We've had that discussion, and we're all in that in that direction. Oh, thank you. I just wanted to make sure we are on the same page. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Amendment to 1078. That's that's on gu the gun stock one, right? Zero four six eight. Zero six four eight. Received it on February. Well, I got it. Do you have it, John? Zero six four eight. And what's the bill number? Bill number is uh, ten seventy eight. That's it. It's a simple amendment. All we're asking for is transparency. Uh, you were saying Katie in the front row? Yes. Um, I testified on the original bill, which was maybe oh. a little overboard. But uh, basically, what's the 
Side note, yeah. that's how much tax burden cost that we shift to anybody who doesn't fall into any of those other ones. Fifty-five million six hundred and twenty-seven thousand four hundred ninety. That we're shifting to all the young people who don't fit into these categories. Well, I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to entertain motions to reconsider, and we'll go back and revote on it with a fiscal note. Okay. Well, I, I don't think the fiscal note because it doesn't affect my my opinion. Is it doesn't affect the municipalities. It affects the municipalities. The taxpayers. Oh, so if you don't that. fall into these categories, if you're you're just 20 move, something, move, moving it around within the right. So it doesn't affect our budget. I don't right. see a fiscal note as applicable to this. All right. Anyway. What are you going to do, Tom? I'm going to go back to those those bills that they want fiscal note on, and I'm going to go back and reconsider those bills, and let them revote with the fiscal note. Better get some more material on it. Yeah, you want to get some more pe papers? Yeah. I'll wait for you. I'll just okay. wait for him to come back. So where are we at? We get, the clerk needs to get some more paperwork. Yeah. Now there's some 156. Some 56. There's 156 going through. Right? right, we already did that one. This one, 1057. Which one? That's a uh, tax exemption for the elderly. Okay. And this one is the tax exemption for the dis disabled. So there's three that we're going to look at. So you get a redo all the bills? Yeah. Okay. Well, it yeah. should, it should oh. go pretty quick. All right. I'm I, I hey, Jim. Jim, <laughs> I was looking at the strategy we can we can implement to make everybody feel comfortable. Is on these three bills, mm -hmm. I'll look for a motion to reconsider the bills. Okay. And again, that will put it back on the table. Then we can revote. Okay. And ask for this fiscal note as part of the of the uh, motion. That's awesome. And. So, but I'm concerned about the fact we're going to lose a lot of time, so I'd like to get you to try to move, I'll do it. move along. Okay. Thank you. Ivy. I have one. Those are very pretty flowers.
Sorry about that. You're all good. I forgot. Let me look. Yeah. Because I forgot what the title It's the default budget bill. Let's get started again. Okay, this is municipal and county government in executive session here on 2-22-22. And we, where we left off, we took a recess, was uh, on House Bill 1057, getting ready to go to House Bill 1069. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm, we're going to start. We're going to uh, have a little stutter step here, and I'm going to look to see if do I have a motion to reconsider HB 1055. Yes, we have a motion from Representative Stavis. Is it a second? A second. second. Representative Mangiapudi. Okay, this is the bill relative to the tax exemption uh, for those with disabilities and severely hearing impaired. Uh, and could you explain your motion? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd be happy to. <laughs> um, I, I put forward this motion, seconded this motion, or put forward this motion, so that the committee could get the fiscal notes that it needs to make a responsible and well-informed decision on all of these bills that propose tax exemptions or tax credits because all of them in some way, shape, or form have a downshifting effect on other taxpayers in our communities. And we simply need to know how much of an effect that might be in order to make a sound, well-informed vote on these bills. Because okay, we're going to take them one at a time. It, thank you for this bill. <laughs> OK, the, there's been a motion to reconsider House Bill 1055. Is there a second? Do we have a second down yeah. here? Representative Manjapudi seconds the motion. Uh, I could ask the clerk to call a roll on reconsideration. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay, the uh, motion is to reconsider House Bill 1055. Uh, Vice Chairman Piamonte? Yes. Clerk votes yes. Representative Tripp? I vote yes. Representative Guthrie? Yes. Representative Salas? Yes. Representative Rhodes? Yes. Representative Melvin? Yes. Representative Ayer? Yes. Representative Power? Yes. Representative Chair Levin? Yes. Representative Gilman? Yes. Representative Majori? Yes. Representative Stavis? Yes. Representative Mangaputi? Yes. Representative Van? Yes. Representative Klee? Yes. Representative Gallagher? Yes. Representative Ryan? Yes. And Chairman Dolan? Yes. The motion passes uh, 19 to 0. Okay, now that we have on the table uh, 1055 to be reconsidered. And I'm going to ask Representative Stavis to uh, elaborate. Uh, you did it already, but if you could do it for the record this time, uh, uh, what you want reconsidered and how you want it to be reconsidered. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would like to reconsider 1055 in order to give this committee time to obtain a fiscal note which will give us precise information or even ballpark information on what kind of an impact passing or not passing this bill might have either on the state or on the residents of the towns and municipalities that um, are forced or choose to adopt the, this increase in tax exemptions and credits. Thank you. So just to clarify, uh, as I hear, you're, you're asking the committee to reconsider House Bill 1055 as amended to OPP it? No. Not necessarily. I think we have to wait until we get that information well, from the, the DRI. The fiscal, we won't be waiting for any of the fiscal notes. What, they, what happens in the process is the request for fiscal note goes to the Speaker's office, and then they make a decision whether to uh, get a fiscal note or not. It doesn't, come, it doesn't come back to the committee. That's different from what the clerk told me. But Mr. Mr. Speaker, I mean, yes. Ms. thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think we've already voted to reconsider. That's the vote that we just took. Right. So now we're obligated to vote again on 1055. Right. The question is, do we want to bring another motion before we consider the vote on 1055? So we've already agreed that we're going to talk it over again. Um, so that's so why. So your, your recommendation is to uh, my vote recommendation. On OTP? No, my recommendation is not OTP. Mm -hmm. My recommendation is that we uh, request. Um, more information about the shifting. My understanding is it's what about 55 million that will be shifted. Yes, 55 million 627 thousand dollars is going to be shifted from one citizen group to another citizen group if all of these bills that deal with exemptions. Right. My thought was that the, the motion would be to OTP this fiscal note. We could do, I Mr. Guess Chair. So procedural, is that possible? You explained to us that OTPA, when we were voting for OTPA, the reason we voted against that was because we didn't have the fiscal note. Right. And That's you're saying, yeah, no, we are reconsidering, but you're saying we won't get it back. So without getting the fiscal note, asking us to vote for OTPA doesn't make any sense in my mind. Maybe I'm kind of tunnel vision. But just explain to me the other motion now that we have reconsidered in a unanimous reconsideration, would it be possible to have um, other motion now, for example, I, ITL, and when it gets to the floor, if we have the fiscal note, floor amendment, and then overturn it there?
doesn't bounce back to us for us to make a decision whether we agree or not that the person was or that what the, the person was they chose to think of. That, that ours is an open recommendation to the to the speaker that this requires a fifteen A, and then he can decide whether it does or not. Yeah. A follow up, Mr. Yeah. Chair. So it makes sense to say, you know, pending fiscal note, we voted ITL. So if the fiscal note comes in as a floor amendment at the session, then we have the full body to act upon and overturn it. Yes, Representative Maggiore. Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm curious um, if we have to dispose of this bill today. Could it, so my follow-up then to yeah. that is, so in order to avoid the possibility or the, the potential of, confu of, of additional confusing about voting on, on the disposition of this bill, can we send that request to the Speaker's office? If it is approved, we'll get the fiscal note. If it's denied, we won't. And then we can dispose of the bill pending that decision at one of our uh, other... We, we can. We can try and see what, see what they unprecedented in, in my me too in my uh, tour here so I, I'm not uh, I'm not telling you what's going to happen uh, representative David I, I feel a little bit back to the future here because I think that was indeed my original motion um, and and if I may mr. chair just say a few words about this group of bills yep I think that it is a responsible thing for this committee out of all committees to do to very carefully weigh and measure the potential impact that the many many bills that come before us requesting tax exemptions or tax credits for special groups of people over other groups of people if it doesn't get considered here as a matter of public policy for this state it will not be considered anywhere and I think we have a solemn obligation to fully understand the impact of shifting these dollars from one group to another when any bill comes before us that requests an increase in an existing tax exemption or a new tax credit. And I thank you for letting me speak. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman? I, I, see, I see your hand up. Let, let me suggest this, though. Uh, rather than prolong this discussion, Suggest that the motions we have on the floor be withdrawn, and that you uh, designate me to to go forward with the uh, recommendation that the committee wants to see fiscal notes on these three bills, and what what that means, and we'll, I'll get some output out of the speaker's office, and then I'll bring it back to you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I just uh, want to make a point of order. We had a, a vote to reconsider the motion OTPA. So we can suspend, uh, someone can withdraw that motion, the, the OTPA motion, but that's the, the only course of action we can do now. In, in my opinion, you can please correct me if I'm wrong, is to re-vote on OTPA as we are allowed under the, the, the approved motion to reconsider or suspend. But if we come back, or whoever made the motion can withdraw it, and the second can be withdrawn. But when we do reconvene on this bill, our, our order of business would be to vote on, re take a re-vote on OTPA. We can't entertain another motion, because the only thing we're allowed to reconsider is OTPA. Right, but we can withdraw the motion. Then. Correct, right. yes. So typically, or can't we, we have vote down? Typically, we only have four four actions that we can take. One is OTP, one is ITL, one is OTPA, and the fourth one is interim study. Those are our four options. Uh, so we're, we're kind of skirting around this a little bit to, and just delaying it to try to get to whether we want OTP or ITL business. So that's where we are. Uh, yes, Representative Manchukui? Uh, with the reconsideration, we can vote it up or down, right? If we can, with the reconsideration. Right, the motion is still on the table. Yeah. yeah, so we could say no, so we are not reconsidering, and the OTPA stays on it. What I'm suggesting is that 
those who made the motion would draw their motion at Scott's direction tomorrow with the input that I get from the speaker. Do I still do my other thing yet? We voted to reconsider. So now we're back at OTPA. So I think that our choice is either to vote again on OTPA, vote it down, get the fiscal notes, and, or could we table it? I mean, could we table it and pick it up tomorrow? The tabling's not in order. Tabling's not in order. Um, because we have already voted to reconsider. Right, we can, but we can withdraw that. We can withdraw it now. Can we withdraw a motion? I don't think so. We, we voted. Can we, recon can we withdraw a motion that we no. voted on? We didn't vote. What? Yes. Yeah, we did. They, I got you. The clerk called the roll. Yeah, we voted to reconsider. We, we called the roll. We so did. that's where we are now. I don't know. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I know everybody's head is ready to explode. So um, the, the, what you've uh, agreed to take on is to, to go forward and to find out what the uh, fiscal note is on it. Um, I, if I'm not being out of line, could I ask that we, that we ask what the fiscal impact of this is on the taxpayers? As was stated, all of our credits, um, the, the DRA puts it on as taxes lost, when it's really not, it's taxes burden shift. Uh, in 2020 was 55 million six hundred and twenty seven thousand four hundred and ninety six so if we could get more of what the impact is I'll as ask, a fiscal I, I don't think it's going to be on so it's on the DRA report that's why we, so if we had it formally for all of the members rather than us each having to look it up it would be wonderful thank you okay uh, representative van is correct that we have voted to reconsider this bill so I'm going to suggest that we vote that down and give you and get the chairman, whoever he might be, to go find <laughs> out find out about the fiscal notes. So, we, so we're not in an in-between with some fiscal notes and some reconsideration. I, I'm going to suggest that we, we vote reconsideration down, and then we start fresh tomorrow with the input that we get. Yeah. Already voted. We'd have to reconsider. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I move to continue House Bill, whichever one we're on. 1055. 1055 to, uh, I think I need, to, a motion to continue needs to be to a date certain. Yes. So, at the risk of not having all the information, I would move to continue this bill until February 28th and keep my fingers and toes crossed that we have something with we the can't. risk that if we don't have it, then we are where we are. We can't. I Why? apologize. Mr. Why can't we move to continue? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Chairman, it, if I may make a friendly suggestion, we, we did certainly already vote the, the reconsider. Right. Perhaps we could just put this aside for a minute call the house clerk and ask him to come over and explain exactly where we are in the process and what exactly we need to do to be able to move forward. I don't think that that would be out of line to just put it aside for a few minutes while he walks over from the tunnel and then we could move on to other business while he's on his way over here. I'm not sure I have the information. Okay, thank you. That's, that's a good, good input. Mr. Chair, I'd be happy to make that request of him. I'm going to take a walk first. And I think that's my responsibility. Uh, I'm not trying to get us where we are now, and it's up to me what to do or fix it. Uh, you're welcome to accompany me. Representative Maggiore, I appreciate your, mo your idea, but I'm determined that uh, we either take up this bill executive today or tomorrow. Okay? I think we have to. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I think we probably should.
I'm going to I'm going to pick that up during our lunch break. We're going to tackle a few more bills while we still have some time. All right, is, are, are you all confused as much as you can be at this point? Okay. Um, we'll take a recess and a, after a couple more bills, and that'll give myself and Representative Stavis, if she wants to accompany me, to search out some answers here. We're kind of in, in uncharted territory, <coughs> so we'll uh, we'll learn what the uh, right road is here. All right, the next uh, bill we have is. Uh, uh, is House Bill 1069, which is relative to the election of the village district commissioners within the Belknap County. Uh, Representative Tripp, do you have a motion? I move uh, OTP, uh, House Bill 1057. 1050, 1069. Oh, 1069, sorry. Yes. Uh, is, is there a second? Mr. Representative LaSella seconds it. Is a discussion on HB 1069? Oh, I, I did pass out an amendment, Mr. Chair. Yeah, to this an amendment? Yes, it's uh, 0483H. Got it. We all should, we, do you all have that amendment? Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you like to present what the, the amendment changes? Right. Oh, yes, at the. Um, public hearing, there was a question whether um, we should just strike, um, just not just have it for any any village district that wants to go from three to five, because the, um, the current RSA only limits that increase to the towns of Merrimack and Hooksett. But there, there was an interest in increasing this in another town. So my amendment would um, it allow any village district in the state, if they want to go from three to five, they can do so at their annual meeting. And then those additional commissioners that would be added if the town, if the village district agreed to do that, would be filled according to current RSA. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm a little bit lost here, so I just need some clarification. I have in my possession two amendments to this bill. Are we t which which amendment? I'm looking at okay. 0483H. Okay. Thank you. I don't have another amendment if there is a second amendment. So the, so the, the, the basic uh, change here with the amendment changes it from just Merrimack and Hooksett application to any village or any town. Correct, Mr. Chair. Um, the original bill um, added with uh, districts within Belknap County and the towns of Merrimack and Hooksett. Merrimack and Hooksett are already in RSA, um, but the bill originally was to allow only districts within Belknap County. Um, during the public hearing, I raised the issue whether we should not allow any, that, whether we should allow any, uh, all village districts to make that decision to go from three to five if they so wish. And so that was the basis for my amendment. Okay. Uh, Representative Tripp, do you have a motion on this amendment? I move OTP on uh, amendment 2022 483H. Discussion on the I will motion. second that motion. Thank you for made and second. Uh, Mr. Kulik, want to take the roll on the amendment? Okay, uh, House Bill 1069, Amendment 0483H. Uh, Vice Chairman Piamonte? Yes. Clerk votes yes. Representative Tripp? Tripp votes yes. Representative Guthrie? Representative Lasalas? Yes. Representative Rhodes? Yes. Representative Melvin? Yes. Representative Ayer? Yes. Representative Power? Okay. Uh, Representative Tree 11? Yes. Representative Gilman? 
Yes. Representative Majori. Yes. Representative Stavis. Yes. Representative Mangaputi. Yes. Representative Van. Yes. Representative Klee. Yes. Representative Gallagher. Yes. Representative Rung. Yes. And Chairman Dolan. Yes. Uh, motion passes 19 to 0. So Representative Tripp, do you have a motion uh, with House Bill 1069 as amended? I move OTPA on House Bill 1069. I second that, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, would you take the roll, Mr. Clerk, on OTP as amended on House Bill 1069? Okay, uh, Representative Piamonti? Uh, yes. Clerk votes yes. Representative Tripp? I vote yes. Representative Guthrie? Yes. Representative Lasalas? Yes. Representative Rhodes? Yes. Representative Melvin? Yes. Representative Villa? Yes. Uh, Representative Power? Yes. Representative Chair Levin? Yes. Representative Gilman? Yes. Representative Majori? Yes. Representative Davis? Yes. Representative Megapudi? Yes. Representative Van? Yes. Representative Klee? Yes. Representative Gallagher? Yes. Representative Rung? Yes. And Chairman Dolan? Yes. Motion passes 19 to 0. With, uh, without objection, I'll put that on the consent calendar. Okay, next up, uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. We have the clerk here. Oh, oh welcome. Uh, well, I'll, why don't I t we'll take a... Uh, a five-minute recess, and we'll get some input from our our clerk on, on where we were with the uh, with the fiscal note request. You want to come join us, Paul? Let's have a little conversation. Yeah. The the, uh, the issue, Paul, we have is uh, we have three uh, pieces of legislation in front of us, at least three, where the committee is feeling like it uh, that there's enough fiscal impact in their opinion, that they like to request fiscal notes for those three bills. And so we were kind of stuck on what the process would be uh, for that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning, members of the committee. So the situation is that you can ask for a fiscal note. Um, you have to be in executive session, and you actually have to take a vote as a committee to request of the Legislative Budget Assistance Office a request for a fiscal note. I would note, however, we are now past the deadline for early bills. So even if you do ask for a fiscal note at this point, um, in order to be assigned to a second committee, you will need to suspend any House rules for action. So just be mindful of that. Um, that second committee has to be no, the full House would have to do that. Oh, really? if, 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 if a fiscal note is returned stating that you, uh, if, it, if it comes back showing it's going to appropriate $3 million or something like that, um, then uh, in order to go to a second committee, which it would need to, uh, would require a rule suspension to do that. Well, uh, the clerk is here. We have questions for him? Yes. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Clerk, the question that we have is that we have a set of bills which change the tax exemptions for various classes of persons. Looking at the DRA's information, it looks to us as though this is going to transfer the burden in excess of $50 million if they all were to pass as now proposed, transfer something in the neighborhood of $50 million from one class of persons to another class of persons. We'd like to know that. It, it doesn't affect the state's budget, but it does affect individual taxpayers, mm -hmm. and by extension, um, the towns and cities. So our question is, how can we get that information so that we can make an informed decision? And do I understand that what you're saying is that 
at this juncture we can no longer get that information? Not at all. Um, you could take a vote as a committee to request a fiscal note. I would note, however, when these bills are reviewed, and every bill is reviewed by the speaker when they're assigned, um, every bill uh, d is determined at that point whether or not it needs to go to a second committee. And historically, based on, um, based on the text that's in front of you now, um, most of these bills, these property tax bills specifically, don't historically go to a second committee, which is why um, they might not have been assigned thus previously. Yeah, follow up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No, I understand why it wouldn't go to a second committee. What we're trying to figure out is what are we doing to the citizens? Sure, by all means, as, as I mentioned, the, uh, getting a, a request for a fiscal note um, is, is within your purview to do. Mr. Chair? Yes, Court Manager, please. I, I have a procedural question. We took a vote on a bill mm -hmm. ought to pass as amended. Yes. And it 10 to 9. And then the reconsideration of that bill passed unanimously. So now we are sitting at reconsideration. When we are looking at reconsideration, we either have to vote it down or reinstate OTPA. Isn't that correct? Uh, no. Um, no. So if you voted to reconsider, you are now at the last motion that was acted on, which is OTPA. Um, that being said, if this is one of those bills that you're looking for that information on, um, the, the chair can recess the executive session on that particular piece of legislation while you're awaiting that re the result of the fiscal note. Follow up, just a quick follow up, yeah, Mr. Chair. Ahead. Yeah, so that means the reconsideration can hold and that will stay as on the table as we reconsider. Because of the situation you're in, you can, the, Recess, when you come back, the motion is still pending of ought to pass as amended. Okay, thank you. Representative Gallagher? So uh, for the chair to recess the executive session while we wait for a fiscal note, do we have to motion for the chair to do that, or is it just entirely up to his own prerogative? Uh, the chair has the right to do that. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Clerk. I have a question about fiscal notes. Is, is there a difference between us asking DRA for some information, some, you know, about the, the tax implications for this other class of persons? Um, is there a difference between that and a formal fiscal note on a bill where there's a report from DRA that lists what the uh, potential um, uh, fiscal impacts would be? Yes. Um, the If you request a fiscal note, that and the processes, the Legislative Budget Assistance Office would then contact whichever agency would be responsible for compiling that information. The agency would then respond with whatever um, whatever their estimates would be, and that would actually be physically attached to the legislation. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if you requested directly from DRA right now and sent an email uh, and just said, we're looking for this information. It would not be attached to the actual piece of legislation. However, you could certainly submit it such that it, it goes um, into the record for the, the, the committee. Okay, thank you. So there's really two types. Like there's information, financial information we're getting on a tax impact, and then there's a formal fiscal note. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And thank you, Mr. Clark. So, if, if following up on Representative Rung's question, in the latter case, when we're if we just ask for information from DRA, would we still then have to suspend House rules? If if it if the language came back such, if if the information that you receive. Uh, states that, that they think that this is going to require some sort of additional tax or appropriation or a penalty or something along the lines that would necessitate it to go to a second committee, then the answer would be yes. Yes, but, but that's 
somewhat different than just a reapportionment of taxes amongst citizens. That's correct. Right? That's so so in that in that case, if that's the inf specific information we seek, not you know, how how much is this going to make taxes go up, but how much tax is going to be shifted from one class of people to another class of that people. That should not affect a, that a, should not affect the a, process. a second committee Thank process. You. Correct. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, no volatile today. <laughs> um, the, the question I have, kind of just for clarification, um, in this case where there is no burden to the, the city, the state, the town, village district of any sort, going to the LBA for a fiscal note, they're just going to come back with zero because this is this affects the individual taxpayers and not that it, would you say that that's incorrect I could not say that because okay. even even if you um, if you requested a, a fiscal note they would likely do a deep dive and try to come back with something for you um, the, at the end of the day fiscal notes are not always about appropriations they're not always about tax and fee increases, but there are significant costs associated with various aspects of government. And this committee actually gets several of these fiscal notes every year where, where the fiscal note will state, uh, this does transfer one, you know, one tax base to another. Um, but I, I would tend to think that LBA would have suggested that right at the beginning. Um, through the process, um, but again, I, I don't know the specifics. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Clerk. As always, your uh, your input has been very educational, and I appreciate you taking the time. Thanks. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so, with that input from uh, Paul Smith, uh, we have these three bills. 1055, 1056, and 1057. Um, let's review what our options are. We have 1055, which we've already voted to, to reconsider. Uh, 1056 and 1057 are, are still pending what we want to do with that. One of our options that we haven't really spoken about yet is we could ITL all three of these bills. If you're uncomfortable with with moving forward and with what we may or may not get back from uh, on a fiscal note. So with that, uh, we're at 1055. We have a motion to reconsider. Well, I'm saying we voted to reconsider. So at this point, we're at 1055 with a motion to OTP as amended. So the, now the question is to vote on that. Uh, Representative Klee? May I speak to that motion? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm going to recommend that we, um, I don't know the proper terminology, but basically that we vote no to OTPA um, so that we can take on another motion. The burden that all of these will have, and I know I'm supposed to speak to this one particular one. Um, and I apologize, my notes here somewhere. But when we when we look at the total burden based on 2020 of the shift of taxes, we're looking at fifty five million six hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars that we are taking from one group of people to another group of people, just in these three bills alone. Um, it, it's a lot to ask for people when we keep talking about workforce housing, bringing younger people in, and so on. So I think that we do need to um, turn this particular vote around so that we can bring uh, another motion on um, and, and give some equal benefits to all of them. While it, it pains me, it truly does pain me to vote any of these down um, because these are well-deserving groups of people, I fear what we're doing to the alternate groups of people. Um, so I, I would like you to consider voting no on the auto, auto tax with amendments. Thank you. 
Okay, and, and let me oh, go ahead, Representative Brown. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a question for Representative Klee. Um, when you got that figure of $55 million, can you describe the process of how you uh, got to that number? Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sure. Um, I have it right in front of me here. Um, if you go to the DRA website um, and you look at each of the individual reports, the very last column, column in the bottom will tell you what the statewide tax loss is. You can actually, when you pull up the alpha, you can see by community. And that is, if I just bring this up correctly, so for instance, the one that I have right in front of me right now um, is the veterans exemption and tax credits. They don't refer to that one as taxes lost. They actually refer to that one as the credits because that's an, an obvious. Taxes lost would be more for those that were doing the um, exemptions. So in this particular one, I bring it up, it's 2020, and I go all the way down to the very, very bottom of that report and it says statewide totals. There were 31775637000 dollars in tax shift is the best way I can refer to it as. But they refer to it as the total amount of tax gr credits granted. If I went over to, let's see the, I think this is the, um, the elderly, and I were to look at that, the very last column towards the bottom is called taxes lost. And if I look at the very, very bottom, I will see that it was $23,228,727 thousand dollars of tax shift or tax loss as they refer to it. Each one of these has their alpha. If you just go to Google New Hampshire tax exemptions and credits, it will come up and you can find it that way. Um, and then it gives it in um, county, it gives it in um, alpha, you can get it in a spreadsheet or you can get it in a PDF form. You're welcome. <coughs> yes, uh, Representative Power. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Would I be correct in stating that the, the numbers that Representative Klee just shared from the DRA website, that in fact the numbers would be higher um, due to the fact that this bill is proposing higher numbers? Yes, I do. They, they would, in fact, be, be higher because more people would fall into those categories. Um, and those, so for instance, if we were just to take something like the veterans one where we're changing over from 50 to 200, all those communities that had 50, as long as they maintain it, they're going to be getting more money. So yes, these numbers will, in fact, go up and be higher. Elderly credit, if we take into 60 into consideration versus 65 as it stands now, we're adding more people to that group. So yes, in fact, it will go up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd like to just state for my own understanding and, and possibly for others as well that, as it was previously mentioned, towns and cities are already able to grant these exemptions, and many, many of them already do. And so if we were to vote ITL, on this reconsideration motion, it would not be like we were taking an, any exemption or credit away from anyone. We would simply be hold, stopping the train in the station until we can get better data, which I think is the responsible thing to do. And I'd also just like to put in a word, we, we talk a lot about attracting younger people to the state, but I'd like to put in a word for those of us who are not young and for those of us who are struggling to pay our property taxes, which go up every year relentlessly, and that, that just you know do not fall into any one of these categories. And I know many people in my community who are in their 60s, 70s, and 80s who can no longer stay in their homes because of this shifting and raising of property taxes. And the combination of those two things is, you know, it's, it's a killer for older people. So that's, thank you. Uh, okay, we're at this point, we're, we're at back to HD 1055. And we have a motion on the table to OTP as amended. Um, yeah. Uh, that motion's already been passed. Right. So I don't know what. 
Right. We're, in the, we're in the reconsider point. So are we going to reconsider the vote? Is that what are we going to vote again? Oh, okay. We got to reconsider the last vote. Okay, so we're going to reconsider the uh, the last vote we took. So, uh, is there a, a motion to be made? A new motion to be made on ten fifty five? Oh, so we need to vote on on the ought to pass. Yeah, so we have a recommendation, rather a motion, ought to pass as amended. Right? Yes. You're all with me? All right. So, uh, Mr. Clerk, if you would call the roll. I just need who who made that motion? Was it Davis and Mangafudi? Yes. No. 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 no, that was from the reconsideration. I don't have I don't have any first or second on this. Not the pass as amended. I don't have a first and second. Original first and second. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Okay, so that's basically the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So we're now voting on OTP as amended. The motion was made by Representative Ayer and, and seconded by Representative Tripp. So now, uh, Mr. Clerk, will you take the, the roll? Okay, uh, Vice Chairman Piamonte. No. Clerk votes yes. Representative Tripp. No. Representative Guthrie. No. Representative Lasalas. No. Representative Rhodes. No. Representative Melvin? No. Representative Ayer? No. Representative Power? No. Representative Chair Levin? No. Representative Gilman? No. Uh, no. Representative Majority? No. Representative Stavis? No. Representative Magapudi? No. Representative Van. No. Representative Clee. No. Representative Gallagher. No. Representative Rank. No. And uh, Chairman Dolan. No. Mr. Chair. Yes. I move to make a motion that the ITL House Bill 1055. Just a sec, though. Well, let's get the, uh, the, the vote from the uh, clerk. Seventeen to two. Seventeen to the OTP failed. Is there another motion? I have a, I have yes. a motion to ITL House Bill 1055. I'll second. Motion's been made and seconded. Did you get uh, three years a second? No, I've got to get some more forms. <laughs> you need some more paper. The clerk is running out of paper here. <laughs> Yeah, the motion is to ITL. The motion was made by Piemonte and seconded by Clee. Gilman. Now, uh, by the way, while the clerk is arranging his papers, if we, uh, FYI, if we ITL this bill, there'll be no need for official notes. Mr. Chairman, yes. would it be in order we send it to the floor with an ITL recommendation, in the meantime ask for information as the clerk had said with the, with the impact, not a fiscal note, but just the impact, and then would it, if we wanted to, on the floor, we could have a uh, we could uh, vote down the ITL motion and pass an OTP motion. No, I, I believe that an ITL vote kills the bill. 
So you, you won't, it'll never get to the floor. It will get to the floor. Yeah. Well, it will. It will. You can hold the chin and the front of it. I did it once. I stand corrected. You, you can be overturned on the floor. So, so it would be possible if if you had really strong feelings about this, and if the fiscal impact to the municipalities was minimal, then we could bring it up on the floor, explain it, and then based upon the feeling of the house, we could pass it. That's an excellent idea, Representative Lasalas. I think that's what we all want. To just have the information so we can make a well-informed decision. Yes, and to follow up on your earlier comment, Representative Stavis, I, I fall into all three of these bills. <laughs> I'm old, a veteran, and crippled. I, I don't know whether to say I'm sorry or congratulations. <laughs> It's all in your mind. <laughs> Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, but because we are ITLing here in our committee, we have to request for the financial whatever, the fiscal note or impact information so that, yes. you know, you can fight it on the floor right. with the information. Right. Debbie, Debbie Hammonds, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm not sure necessarily that we have to ask for an impact statement as such. I think whoever is going to speak to it on the floor, if they decide that they want to speak to it as an ought to pass, they could bring up those facts and figures and, and so on. And if they wanted to give it to their, to all of the members, that would be, you know, it could be sent to them through whoever. But um, I don't know if we necessarily have to. I think it's more of us individuals who's ever going to speak to do our homework. Okay. Any other input? Yes, Representative McConnell. I just have a, I guess a question. We may have some other bills that are very similar to these tax credits, whatever you want to call them. Is it going to be the policy of this committee now that we're going to have to get financial records or costs in order to pass these? Well, it's not, not a policy. It's a, it would be a decision based on what the committee wants at that particular time. Well, I just think it's a shame that it, we've been here for a couple of hours, and uh, there's been plenty of opportunity up prior to the executive session to try to request this information. Um, I'm, just, I'm just disappointed. In that. I'm not disappointed on the vote of the bill. I'm just uh, disappointed that we didn't get some heads up or we could have gotten investigated this and get this information prior to the uh, prior to today's meeting. Davis. But with respect, we, we did request it. And we're told that it had to wait till the executive session to be voted on. We did request it when the bills were first heard. Okay, seeing no further comments. Motion. Uh, do, I, do I have a motion? Uh, we have a motion of ITL. Uh, and we're ready to take a vote on that motion. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll for ITL on 1055. Okay. Uh, Vice Chairman Piamonte. Yes. Clerk votes yes. Representative Tripp? Yes. Representative Guffrey? No. Representative Osalis? Yes. Uh, Representative Rhodes? Yes. Representative Melvin? Yes. Representative Ayer? Yes. Representative Power? Yes. Uh, Representative 311? Yes. Representative Gilman? Yes. Representative Majori? Yes. Representative Stavis? Yes. Representative Mangaputi? Yes. Representative Vann? Yes. Representative Klee? Yes. Representative Gallagher? Yes. Representative Rung? Yes. Chairman Dolan. Yes. 18 to 1, the, the ITL passes. Okay. It, lo it looks like while we're stuck in the mud there for a while, it looks like we're starting to gain some traction. <laughs> All right. House Bill 1056, which is relative to veterans tax credits. Uh, is there a motion to reconsider it? Yes. 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 Yes.
Is there a second? Okay. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Discussion? So, you know, discussion, Mr. Clerk, if you would take the a vote on reconsideration of 1056. If I can just get the, the motion? Yeah, take who's, your time. Who the people were? Uh, the the uh, motion was made by Representative Klee. Oh, oh, sorry, Representative Van. Van, okay. And uh, seconded by... Representative Rung. <laughs> was it you? Was it you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Representative Rung uh, was the second. Okay, uh, motion to reconsider House Bill 1056. Vice Chairman Piamonti. Yes. Clerk Post, yes. Representative Tripp. Yes. Representative Guthrie. Yes. Representative Osiris. Yes. Representative Rhodes. Yes. Representative Melvin. Yes. Representative Vea. Representative Power. Representative Majori. Yes. Uh, Representative Chair Levin. Yes. Representative Gilman. Representative Stavis? Yes. Representative Mangaputi? Yes. Representative Van? Yes. Representative Klee? Yes. Representative Gallagher? Yes. Representative Rung? Yes. And Chairman Dolan? Yes. Motion we consider passes 19 to 0. No, uh, Representative Guthrie had. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, my apologies. Uh, 18 to 1. I second the motion. The okay, motion has been made to, made to ICL 1056 and it's been seconded. Any, uh, what's that? Who, who were the motions to second? I'm sorry. Uh, Representative Piamonte made the motion and Representative Osella seconded. So, wait a moment. With the previous bill, didn't we have to first take the OTPA motion again and then do the ITL motion? Or... This is this is to uh, to reconsider. No, that, that we've already done. No, that we already done that. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, Representative Gallagher is correct. Yeah, I believe you. Uh, when you when you vote to reconsider, you have to first vote on the immediate pre passed uh, motion, which in this case was ought to pass. So what we have on the floor is ought to pass, and I urge people to vote no. So that a more reasonable motion, motion can be made. I'll read this out. Do I feel like? Okay. Uh, who made the second on that one? No second. You want to withdraw no, your second? Okay. You have a, is there a new motion to be made? Well, it's no. It's the old motion. We're back to oh, ought the old to pass. Motion of OTP. Yes, and I urge everyone to vote no on OTP so that another motion can be made. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Clerk, would you call the roll on 1057 for OTP? 1056. 1056. Okay. 1056. And that was uh, Representative Piamonte and Representative Osalis on the motion, right? Mm -hmm. No. That's the original one. Oh, myself and Osalis. That was the original one was with me. It's not you, John. Okay, the original motion was Representative McDonald, and the second was, I don't remember who the first one was. Lasalis. Uh, Representative Lasalis made the second. Okay, it's getting confusing. So now we're voting on whether we're going to OTP 1056. Right? Yep. You all with me? Yeah. Okay, uh, OTP 1056. 
Vice Chairman Piamonte. No. Clerk Kurtz, no. Representative Tripp? No. Representative Guthries? Uh, Representative Lasalas? No. Representative Rhodes? No. Representative Melvin? No. Representative Ayer? Representative Power? No. Representative Tree Levin? No. Representative Gilman? No. Representative Majori? No. Representative Stavis? No. Representative Magaputi? No. Representative Van? No. Representative Klee? No. Representative Gallagher? No. Representative Run? No. And Chairman Dolan? No. 18 to 1. Okay, now we're back to uh, a new motion that's going to be needed now on HB 1056. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to cite the article. Is there a second? Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion on this? Yes, Representative Tripp. Uh, it's been mentioned that uh, the uh, increasing the standard veterans tax credit from $50 to $200 would be a violation of the Constitution and, it, and that it downshifts uh, an increase in tax credits uh, for the towns. So this is just another further reason not to uh, uh, to ITL the bill. Okay, any, any other further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Clerk, you want to take a roll on the ITL motion for 1056? Okay, uh, ITL 1056. Uh, Rep Representative Piamonte? Yes. Clerk votes yes. Representative Tripp? Yes. Representative Guthrie? Okay. <laughs> Representative Lasalas? Yes. Representative Rhodes? Yes. Representative Melvin? Yes. Representative Ayer? Representative Power? Yes. Representative Majori? Yes. Uh, Representative Trey Levin? Yes. Representative Gilman? Yes. Representative Stavis? Yes. Representative Megaputi? Yes. Representative Van? Yes. Representative Klee? Yes. Representative Gallagher? Yes. Representative Run? Yes. Chairman Dolan? Yes. 18 to 1. Will that Yeah, that, could, that will go on the consent calendar without objection. Mr. Chair, we'll have a report uh, for that. I think Representative Klee agreed to the report, uh, if you would like. Right. Yes. Yep. Thanks. Doesn't mean I'm right. Okay, we had uh, Representative Piamonte as the made the motion and Representative Van seconded it, so we're going to have Representative Piamonte as the chair. Okay, well, moving on to HB 1057, which we originally had OTP'd that. No, we haven't taken any vote on it, Mr. Oh, no, so okay. this would be a good chance to do ITL to begin with, so we don't have to go through this process. We are pretty well versed, I think. Mr. Chair? There's an amendment to this yes. one. May, may I interrupt for just one moment, sure. please? I think that uh, we all need to give, um, maybe not a loud one, but a quiet golf clap to our clerk. 
who has done yeoman's labor this morning. Thank you, Representative. Okay, now we're looking at a, a new motion on HD 1057. Yes. Is it seconded? Second. Who's the other second? There's an amendment. What? No. <laughs> Charlie gave a second. I did. Charlie Melvin. Malcolm Melvin. Change in the line of vision. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion on that? We beat that one to death. All right. <laughs> Let's take let's take a roll, Mr. Clark. On ten fifty seven. Okay, uh, ITL ten fifty seven. Vice Chairman Piamonti. Yes. Clerk votes yes. Uh, Representative Tripp. Yes. Representative Guthrie. Yes. Representative Vasilis. Yes. Representative Rhodes. Yes. Representative Melvin. Representative Ayer? Yes. Representative Power? Yes. Representative Majori? Yes. Representative Tree Levin? Yes. Representative Gilman? Yes. Representative Stavis? Yes. Representative Megapudi? Yes. Representative Van? Yes. Representative Klee? Yes. Representative Gallagher? Yes. Representative Rung? Yes. And Chairman Dolan? Motion passes on ITL 19 to 0. Okay. Um, let, let's let it be known that if any of the members of the committee want to hear fiscal info on those three bills we've just exec, uh, they will not be coming from the chairman or the speaker's office. You'll have to request that information yourself and present it as part of your discussion on the, on the House floor since all three of these bills were ITLs. Is everybody clear on that? Yes, Representative Savers. I would just like to um, thank the chair for leading us through this thicket, <laughs> thicket of thought. That's one way to describe it. <laughs> um, uh, that, that just could have gone really sideways, and it didn't because of your leadership. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Mr. Uh, chair. Yes. Um, all three of them are going on consent calendar. We'll have to yes. make, you know, only if it is pulled off the consent, right. it'll come for a discussion. Right. Correct. We Thank try you. to put things on consent that are 17 to 2 or better. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, again, I want to echo my colleagues. Your leadership today is really, truly a good process where we had a good debate. Thank you. Thank you. We're about to take up 1069. We voted ITP on that. OTP, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, we're going to skip over 1070 for a minute, and we're going to go to 1078. That's the, uh, the Gunstock Area Commission's bill, 1078. Is, is there a, a motion for 1078 from uh, Representative McDonald? Yeah, I believe there's a, an amendment there also. Right. We ha we'll, uh, we'll have to take up the amendment as well. Just uh, on the amendment, a motion to pass on the amendment. You make a motion to pass the amendment. OTPA, the amendment? Mr. Chair, we don't have the amendment. I Is don't have the amendment. Around? No, that's 170. It's not 178. Do we have the amendment for, for 1078? Ten seventy eight, the amendment is O six four eight. 
We don't have it, Mr. Chair. We don't have it either. Okay, well, let's uh, let's get a copy of it and spread it around. Mr. Chairman, yeah. excuse me. I'm totally confused. Are we taking up the gun stock bill now? Yes, yes. Which is 1078? Right. So does 1078 have an amendment, or is it only 1070 that 10, has an We're talking about 1078. And it does have an amendment. I'm told it has an amendment. I don't I, have it in front of me. I thought that was 1070 that had the yeah, amendment. Yeah, we do have an amendment on 1070, I'll I, I don't think we have one on 1078. But the, we don't have one. Ms. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a, a procedural question with yes. regard to committees in executive session. Is it the responsibility of the individual committee members to to obtain these amendments via email and print them out on their own and bring them in, or is it the procedure of the committee to provide a printed copy of the amendment when we come into the executive session? Yes. Well, yes to what? <laughs> yes to both. Uh, it, we, we typically get those uh, when we enter the meeting, but uh, I understand that some of these come very late in the process, so we're going to take the time if, if uh, one of us has the amendment to make sure it gets passed around so we all have it. Mr. Chair, if I might yes. add on to that, typically we get me. <laughs> Uh, typically, we get um, the amendment from the sponsor, and they're obligated to print it out for us. Yes. Good. Thank you. Okay. So, so we tip, so we get them from Heather, or we get them off the table in the corner where the pink cards reside, or we get them ahead of time in our emails. So there's multiple ways that, that these amendments uh, are distributed, and I think I'd like to make sure that responsibility lies with us collectively to point out the fact that someone has an amendment and someone doesn't, and we can stop to make sure we all are on the same page. Yes, Representative Rung? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'd like to respectfully request that our committee adopt a standard where whoever is sponsoring the amendment, I mean, it could be the sponsor of the bill, it could be someone else that it's their responsibility to provide a hard copy before our meetings, our executive sessions. Um, I don't know about all of you, but my email is packed, and it is, would be easy for me to overlook an email that contained an, uh, an amendment attachment. So it, it's much easier to have it available um, at, you know, at the executive session. Thank you. The committee is in charge of the bill now, so it's their responsibility to uh, supply an amendment or somebody from the committee to uh, enter that amendment. Um, they can talk with the sponsor, but once the sponsor cannot come up and say, okay, I have an amendment here, it has to be one person from this committee. So the, the, uh, let me echo that. The, once we're in executive session, we own the bill. <clears throat> we own the bill, and we own any amendments associated with the bill. So, uh, I, and that's why I want to leave the door as far open as I can to, to get all and any amendments that are uh, available to us. Yes, Representative Brown. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Chairman, I sent you an amendment for HB 1177. I sent it to you and I sent it to uh, Representative Maggiore uh, two weeks ago. So should I assume that that is going to appear in hard copy tomorrow or should I bring enough copies when I come in tomorrow because we're executing that bill tomorrow? Yeah, I, I, would, I would say if you make that assumption, you have about a 50% chance of it. Okay, so it sounds like the answer is I should bring in my own hard copies tomorrow. Right, as a backup, I think you should. Okay, thank you. That's all I needed to know. Mr. Yes, Representative Brown? Yeah, I just want to um, address uh, Representative Piamonte's uh, statement. I actually have an amendment in a committee for a bill that I'm not even on. Um, it was a germane bill for something a constituent brought up. So I, 
I assume the responsibility of getting that amendment drafted, printed, and distributed to the committee members. So there is that other way of getting amendments in. It doesn't have to come through the committee. Right. I, I, in a case like that, I would hope that there's a co-sponsor associated with that bill that you can hand that off to that can make it easy for you so you don't have to miss one committee to, to help another committee. Yeah, I, yeah I, I made the sponsor aware that I was going to piggyback on his bill with an amendment. Just respectfully ask or suggest that is it too difficult just to have these amendments printed and on the table when when, when we come in? I'll, it just I'll seems look. very roundabout. Yeah. You know, this person, that person. I'll, um, re I'll reinforce that with Heather, and you all can help if you know about an amendment coming. You can you can um, make sure she knows about it so that when we get to that particular point of the of the process. That the bill will be there on the table. Yes, Representative Powell. Representative Trelevin? Yes. Oh, Mr. Chair, I just want to let you know that this amendment is from the sponsor, one of the sponsors of the bill. He did email it to us, and Heather has no record in her. Yeah, that, that's, where, uh, that's why that's I've been saying it, that, that I don't want to shut off any avenue. I hear you. I, if, if one of us has it, has it that's unfortunate, but at least we can spread it from there. If we all have it, better. If we have it from Heather, that's one uh, then you know, technique. Right. Yeah, so so I, I'm, I don't want to try to penalize any of the sponsors uh, or interested parties by not hearing an amendment because I, I don't have it. Yes, Representative Majuri. Mr. Chair, I made a copy of the amendment and should it please the chair and the committee, I can go make copies for everybody. Please. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes. I have an email from Tara Albert, virtual listening. Good morning. I apologize for sending an email to everyone in the group. However, I'm not sure who this applies to. Microphones are on and clicking of pens is extremely distracting when trying to follow along with the hearing. Thank you. Tara Albert, Solid Waste Operator Training and Certification Coordinator. Just it caught my attention, so I'm just bringing it to you. All right, well, thanks for that input. Uh, let's be mindful of the fact that if our microphones are on, we have to uh, adhere to some amount of level of silence. They don't need to be in a cone of silence, but you should understand that our actions, comments, whispers, noises, are picked up by these microphones, which are very sensitive. Mine is the one that stays on all the time. But if, if you're, if you're going to speak, you could turn your microphone on, and then when you're done, turn it off, please. OK. Uh, so we are looking at uh, 1078, which is, an, uh, which is a, a recommendation for budget procedures at Gunstock. We're going to get an updated uh, amendment that's coming to us from the office. But in the meantime, do we have a motion on 1078? We'll, we'll make sure that we don't have any discussion until uh, majority is back Can among us. Oh, it's for the for amendment. The amendment. I see what you're saying. You want to move on to the next one and come back? All right, we can wait. We can wait. We can wait. You holding up okay for lunch? I'm sorry, sir. I, unless it's a general information, we're not taking input from the audience. Yeah. 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 
give the amendment and then we will show it. Yes, sir, we'll make sure you have a copy of the amendment. <laughs> yeah, it does feel like Representative Maggiore, would you make sure that a gentleman standing up gets a copy? Yes. Thanks, John. You got it. For those of you uh, doing a quick read on the, what was just handed to you, understand that it's a two sided document. I don't see Representative Silber here. Will there be somebody presenting this amendment? Mr. Chairman, um, I, I used to have a policy when I was chair that one of the members would have to bring forward an amendment just for that reason, so they could talk to it, because we couldn't bring other people in. Right, That's I'll why be, it makes it more. I'll be asking for a volunteer to present. Yeah. <laughs> his, uh, his absence. Um, so we are now, for those of you in the audience who have been very patient, uh, we are now looking at House Bill 1078, which is uh, relative to budget procedures for the Gunstock Area Commission. Okay, uh, Representative McDonald, do you have a motion? Yes, I do. I do a motion to uh, adopt Amendment 2022-0648. Motion has been made to adopt the amendment before us. Is there a second? I'll second that. By Mr. Ayer. Representative oh. Ayer had made a second. Is there discussion about this amendment before we move forward? Yes, Representative. Um, I'm going to vote in opposition to the amendment just because I think it requires input by c the commission members and people we heard testimony from. Um, I, I uh, you know, I, I'm disappointed this bill even came forward. 
I wish that commission was in Hillsborough County. They're so successful. I think if it's not broken, don't fix it. And um, any amendment that even addresses that without input from um, the stakeholders, I, I just, I, I would not be able to accept it. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Yes, Representative Cruz. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I think during the um, testimony, I had asked a question as to whether or not they had been presented um, with budgets and so on and asked for input. And um, I think at one point it was quite, quite confusing because certain people said no. Um, and then I believe we got a follow-up email that showed us that they had in fact been doing what had been asked of them and what we would expect of them. So for that reason, I, I have to vote no on this as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, by the way, is there anybody on the committee that would like to step forward and explain this amendment to the committee and the need for it? Okay, Representative Trelevin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, being mindful of the fact that um, I used to hang out with somebody who was employed by the Gunstock Ski Area, and of the fact that I haven't been able to attend meetings in person until today, I'm very grateful to be here. I've been reading and following along, but the salient point for me is that I listened to the radio this morning on the way in, and 1,200 people of the state of New Hampshire, many of whom are probably from Belknap County, spoke up in opposition to any changes to the financial or fiscal situation in or the commissioner situation at Gunstock. Wanted to point that out. Thank you. Any further discussion? Yes, Representative uh, Chiamante. Mr. Chair, I'll move the question and uh, make a motion to accept amendment 2022-648H. Motion's been made to accept the amendment as provided. Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm sorry? Yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> right. So we, the, the motion's been made, and who seconded that? Ray, uh, Representative Ayer? Great. All right, so now we have AP 1078 uh, amended. So let's take a, uh, a vote on the amendment. Okay, 2022-0648H. Uh, Vice Chairman Piamonte? Yes. Clerk votes yes. Representative Tripp? Yes. Representative Guthrie? Yes. Representative Lasalas? Yes. Representative McBride? I'm sorry, uh, Representative Rhodes? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Representative Melvin? Yes. Representative Ayer? Yes. Representative Power? Yes. Uh, Representative Majuri? No. Representative Trey Levin? No. Representative Gilman? No. Representative Stavis? No. Representative Megapudi? No. Representative Van? No. Representative Klee? No. Representative Gallagher? No. Representative Ryan? No. And Chairman Dolan? Yes. The motion to adopt the uh, amendment is 10 to 9. Okay, so we have uh, before us an adopted amendment for HB 1078, and now we're going to take a, take a, see if we have a motion on how to dispose of 1078. Is there a motion? Uh, yes. I have a motion to ITL. Motion has been made to ITL. Is it second? Yes. Second. Representative Ayer seconds it. Is there any discussion on that motion? Yes, Mr. Representative Majapudi. Um, Mr. Chair, just uh, expanding on my colleague, uh, Traveline, uh, uh, there was not just the opposition of 1,200 folks online opposition to this bill. There was 3,500 signature petition against this bill that the people that testified uh, demonstrated uh, or expressed. And this is from the Belknap County uh, voters. So there is a big opposition to this from the county voters or the citizens. So just heeding to that 
and our ITL is the right policy for us. Thank you. Is there further discussion on the bill? Seeing none, we're going to take a vote. On okay, HB uh, 1078 to uh, ITL the bill. Uh, Vice Chairman Piamonte. Yes. Clerk votes yes. Uh, Representative Tripp. Yes. Representative Guthrie. Yes. Representative Osalis. Yes. Representative Rhodes. Yes. Representative Melvin. Yes. Representative Ayer. Yes. Representative Majori. Yes. Representative Power. Yes. Uh, Representative 311. Yes. Representative Gilman. Yes. Representative Stavis. Yes. Representative Megapudi. Yes. Representative Van. Representative Klee. Yes. Representative Gallagher. Yes. Representative Rung. Yes. And Chairman Dolan. Yes. Motion for ITL passes 19 to 0. Okay, without objection, I'll put that on the consent calendar. And I have a confession to make. I think I may be the guilty party of clicking the pen. I'll make a point of not doing that. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Chair, do you need a report on that from the Dems, or, or, or is the, are the Republicans going to submit one? The uh, gun stock bill? 1078, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That will be, the report will be written by Representative McDonald. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, uh, this came up, I think, last year when we had these 19 to 0 votes, votes that, uh, what's the need to write a, a committee report? And I took that to the same gentleman that uh, we spoke to earlier, Mr. Smith, and uh, the answer is we write a report on everything. Mr. Chairman? Yes. You do need a report in case it gets taken off consent. You need to have this be our side of it. Right. Okay. Uh, we're going to next move on to the, uh, the dissolution of a village district, uh, HB 1081. I'm sorry, the, ne the next bill we're going to take up is HB 1087 relative to zoning for single family housing lots. We have a motion. Uh, Ms. Uh, Representative Guthrie, do we have a motion? Okay, motion's made to, to ITL, seconded by Representative Ayer. Discussion on the on the motion? Yes, Representative Davis. Um, so I support this bill because uh, it, it does what we all have said in various hearings and testimonies that we want to do, which is to keep the rural parts of New Hampshire rural and increase housing for single family homes in those areas where they are served by public water and sewer. And that is exactly what this bill does. And so therefore I support it in the hopes that it will be one other small step forward in trying to combat the housing crisis that we, cust that we currently have while not changing the rural character of our state. Representative McDonald. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. This is a, a great idea, but in my community, we have a master plan, and our water and sewer is pretty much 
maxed out. Uh, and if we put in four houses in one acre lots that are supposed to be one, one house, we're going to be talking probably $25, $30 million to upgrade our sewer treatment plant. Uh, again, I think it's a great idea, but it's just, it's, it's, It'd be too taxing on my community to support this bill to change our master plan to go from maybe four single dwellings to uh, 16 residents. Representative Sleeve. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is does not specify for four homes or anything. It, it changes lot sizes, which allows um, more homes and create density. But I have to agree that um, I th I think it would be best to allow each of the municipalities to determine how they need to create their own um, master plan. And, and I can say in Nashua, we have a master plan as well. And there are certain areas that are zoned to do something that would effectively kill six of Nashua's current zoning. Um, so I, I can't support this. I think each municipality should have their own say. Thank you. Representative Davis. I would just like to follow up by saying that the bill specifically says that the lots cannot exceed existing municipal or community water and sewer infrastructure. Any, any further comments? Ms. Representative Fan? Yes, Chairman. Thank you. Um, and I'd also like to remind everyone that uh, state statute allows the community to say you can't do this thing because it does, in fact, exceed our capacity. It's called scattered and premature. So again, the bill says you don't have to enact this if your current water and sewer doesn't allow it. And even if you don't know that and you find it out, the existing statute would allow you to, to deny it. And I'd also like to add, we've waited for 40 years for individual towns to allow historically appropriate density. I did a survey of a town in New Hampshire, a pretty ordinary town in New Hampshire, to determine what the actual historic lot size was. And in Peterborough, the actual historic lot size is less than a quarter of an acre. It's about, it's between 6,000 and 8,000 square feet in the part of town that does in fact have water and sewer. So I just offer that as information that historically, this is a, not too far off from what our existing lot sizes are. And that decisions that were made over the last 50, 60 years to require larger lots in an effort to manage growth actually have given us a form of growth that is not, not sustainable. Um, as Rev. Representative Davis pointed out, it spreads development into the rural district because if you can't use a small lot in the center of town, you have to go to the outside. And um, when you create larger lots um, outside of town, you are also committing the town to the maintenance of those roads, which as I say every time I talk about roads, costs us $4.65 a center line foot every year for every foot of roads to salt, sand, plow, ditch, and mow. And that is not including building the thing or repaving it when the time comes. So I am in favor of this bill for all those reasons because it does allow the towns to opt out if their infrastructure won't support it. And it encourages historically appropriate density in the parts of town that do have services. Thank you. Additional discussion? Mr. Chair. Representative Kresge. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to say that uh, as a selectman, when I see shall require in any bill, uh, I, I, I really get concerned about that because uh, I, the, every one of our towns in New Hampshire are a little bit different and a uh, shoe doesn't fit everybody every foot. So uh, I, I was concerned about that. And then when I see that Although the bill is well intended, and we do have a housing pro problem, but I think there's there's too many uh, individual town difficulties when you designate that a hundred square foot lot size for sing single family home. Uh, I think it's a good idea. I would like to see it uh, in uh, my community. My community is 
the Hampstead is mostly all built up. Uh, and unfortunately, as far as the housing uh, problem is concerned, we have more 300,000, 400,000 homes uh, than we probably can justify with the way things are now. But I can't fit, vote for this bill mainly because it does tell the towns uh, uh, to do a particular planning that they can do on their own if they wish. And I don't think the state should be telling them. Thank you. Any further discussion? Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I am in support of this bill. I want to bring some attention to the online um, support and oppose. There were 23 support and seven opposing. And it, when we have such acute shortage, just in my city, we have 5,000 unit shortage. So we have to, you know, we just cannot keep saying we, we are not going to do anything. This is going to affect. And it does give the municipalities and the rural towns to do what's best for their community. It, it's, um, so if we don't do anything, we are driving workforce housing workforce from our state out. And it's an economic engine that drives our state economy. So with that in mind, I will support this because we need more housing. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Tripp. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the primary reason I'm against this is because this would create a statewide mandate. It removes the, uh, the ability of the local planning, land use planning, to create ordinances that fit the uh, needs and desires of the uh, towns that they exist in. Uh, I, I'm going to vote no on this bill. Thank you. Uh, additional comments? Yes, Representative Lascalas. I would just like to uh, make a comment that following up on uh, Representative Van's comment about the, uh, you know, the fact that we've been waiting for individual towns to, to uh, uh, make these changes, and, and I agree with that uh, issue. I would say that uh, just this morning, I heard that the market is beginning to respond to the need for housing. They're, ch they're turning a uh, major um, office uh, building in Manchester into residential. Uh, that's happening. So uh, the, uh, uh, the market, the free market, is responding to this. Uh, whether it'll occur, I'm I'm not afraid of of this for a small town like mine because uh, we don't have sewer and water, so you know it doesn't impact us from that standpoint. But what is impacting us is the great need for housing generally, and that is coming into even rural areas. So uh, at this point, I don't know how I'm going to vote, but uh, I'll make up my mind when the time comes. Thank you. Any ad additional comments? Yes, Representative McEwry. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and to my friend from Litchfield, I, I agree with everything that you said, and we'll be voting in support of this um, against um, against a couple of different uh, suggestions to vote ITL on this bill. Um, I, I am opposed to the shall in most instances. I am um, I'm opposed to the camel's nose under the tent where, where I see it might happen, but this one is so specific to the communities that have municipal water and sewer. It's not going to affect Northampton. We, we don't have it. Uh, it's not going to affect many of the seacoast communities uh, that, are, that are favorable, but, but I do I, I do not generally like the idea of mandates, but to Representative Van's point, we've got to do something. 
we got to do something. So thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we have a motion on the floor by Representative Guthrie to IPL this bill and it's seconded by Representative Ayer. Seeing no further discussion, Mr. Clerk, would you take the roll? Okay, ITL on 1087, uh, Vice Chairman Piamonte? Yes. Clerk votes yes. Representative Tripp? Yes. Representative Guthrie? Representative Rosales? Yes. Representative Rhodes? Yes. Representative Melvin? Yes. Representative Ayer? Yes. Representative Power? Yes. <coughs> Representative Majori? No. <coughs> Representative Chair Levin? No. Representative Gilman? No. Representative Stavis? No. Representative Mangaputi? No. Representative Van? Yes. Representative Klee? Yes. Yes? Yes. Uh, Representative Gallagher? No. Representative Rung? No. And Chairman Dolan? Yes. The motion passes 11 to 8. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna, we're going to take a break for lunch. I'd like to ask that you all come back by 11, uh, 12, 25. Yeah, so we're going to, uh, uh, in the meantime, uh, Representative Guthrie, we're going to ask you to write the committee report on 1087. Okay, thank you. See you in a minute. See you in a half hour. You okay? Were we overwhelming you? Did you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were pretty adamant about that, so I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm home. Because he just wants to.
pick these up first. Which one? Oh, this one first. All the way up there. Which one? Is the microphone on? <laughs> That's kind of <laughs> It is, so please be careful. All right, let's start up. We're going to take the, uh, the next bill we're going to talk to for the executive committee today is House Bill 1098. Ten ninety eight. Got that one? <coughs> All right. Yeah. I'm working on it. All right. Go up this one. Can you reach on it? Go ahead. Let this thing drop. Oh, that's it. Oh, we can reconsider this. Go ahead. All right. Um, let me go up here. Let's take next. Do we have anybody willing to introduce House Bill 1098? Chairman, I'm willing to introduce it. You have an amendment? Well, there is an amendment, and I'm willing to, to present it. Okay, please do. Okay, so this is an amendment to House Bill 1098, which um, has to do with the number of off-street parking spaces required per occupied dwelling, and the amendment replaces what was originally proposed by Representative Yokola with um, entirely new language, and it says 674 colon 23 colon, uh, dash A, zoning restrictions on parking spaces, the local legislative body shall not adopt ordinances requiring more than one off-street parking space per occupied dwelling. Um, and I'm happy to talk about this minute if you want me to. The amendment? You're going to talk to the amendment? Yeah, I can speak to the amendment. Uh, so. Yeah, it came with the hearing. It's what was presented as at the hearing. He came in with this amendment. All right, let's formalize this up a little bit. Uh, let's see if the, we have a motion on 1098. Uh, Mr. Uh, Representative Ayer, do you have a motion? Uh, I make a motion on this IPL. You want to IPL that uh, 1098? Is, is there a second to IPL? I, I think we have to adopt the amendment first. Okay, we could just we could just kill the bell and ignore the amendment. Yeah, that's one thing we do, but I, I, I have a tendency to want to include rather than excluded. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go look for a motion to, to open the, the, the bill, and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll take a motion to uh, either add the amendment or ignore the amendment. All right. Um, I will say that the prime sponsor uh, did present the amendment to us at the time of the original hearing, if that makes a difference to well, us. I, I, I do remember that. Um, um, so I'm happy to make a, a motion that we uh, adopt the, the amendment and we can make a decision on that and then we can vote on the underlying bill. Okay, is there, is there a second on uh, you, So you want an OTP on the amendment? OTP have, on the amendment, right. and then we'll take up the whole bill right. after we, we vote we on the amendment. second on that motion? Yes. Is there a second? 11? Yeah. Representative Van, do you have the number of the amendment? I do. It is 2022-0610H. Uh, Thank you. 0610H. Okay, we have a motion on the amendment, and it's been seconded. And is there a discussion on the amendment? Yes, Representative uh, Eric Gallagher. Um, so, to be clear as to what the amendment does, it basically just inserts the words on street before parking. It inserts off street, not on street. 
Oh, okay. Thanks. Because what it he's what the what the amendment and the underlying bill both seek to do is to restrict the number of off street parking spaces that can be required for any individual dwelling unit. More, more discussion on the uh, on the amendment. Representative Van, do you want to talk about it some more? Um, I'm happy to say that I think that parking regulations are a huge problem in terms of housing. However, I do not recommend that we adopt the bill because I think it does not. This right, let's, isn't. Let's wait, let's wait for that. Oh, okay. All right. So, so we have a motion. Why, why are we doing this, first of all? I, I just don't get it. Are we regulating traffic in Manchester, or uh, are we not allowing people to buy a second car and have one placed in an area? You know, I well, mean. Let, let's, I, let's narrow this to. Uh, I, this I can actually respond. To well, that, I, I, want it, to I want to narrow it to the it, amendment. It, this not, this oh, is oh, the oh, amendment okay, that no, he's asking about. Uh, I did not bring this bill, but I can tell you that. Uh, the underlying idea here was that when a jurisdiction requires excessive parking, that it, it costs more money to build that building and it uses up land that could be used for housing. So wait, I, I am not in favor of this, either the amendment or the bill, because I don't think this is the way to manage it, but that's the underlying theory behind it. If you take a, a car space is about 200 square feet. So if you require two off street parking spaces and you have to have a drive aisle, you're now at about 750 square feet for parking for that unit, which is in a lot of cases another unit. So that's the, the theory behind it. I don't think this is the way to do it. Okay, so we have a, a motion on the, on the floor to uh, to adopt this amendment as presented. Is there any further discussion? Okay, Mr. Clark is in Manchester County and has a meeting. If you give me a minute. That's all right. He can oh, take a minute. Okay. Mr. Clark, would you call the roll? The motion is OCC on the amendment? Yes. So we have a motion of OCC on amendment 2022060108. House Bill 1098. Vice Chairman Schumacher. Uh, no. Okay, we're going to Representative Chris. Yes. Representative Chris. No. Chris, if you can hear me. Um, Representative McBride, no, is not here, correct? Right. There we go. Representative, I'm sorry. Rhodes, Thank no. You. Rhodes, no. Representative Melvin, no. Representative Ayer, no. Representative Power, no. Um, I'm acting as the clerk, so Representative Majority, no. Representative Trelevin, no. Representative Gilman, no. Representative Stavis, no. Representative Manjapudi? No. Representative Van? No. Representative Klee? No. Representative Gallagher? Yes. Representative Rung? No. Mr. Chair, the motion fails. No, I, I vote no. Oh, you want to vote too? I vote no. Sure, you vote no. <laughs> All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count that. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to count that, and so it is uh, six, 2 to 16, the motion fails. Okay, so now we have uh, the bill 1098. Uh, is there an alternate motion that we can make? Mr. Chair, I just want to have a point of order. Yes. Um, speaking as my years as a clerk on another committee, that motion we previously had is, is actually adopting the amendment. We don't pass an amendment. So it's just on the form, it should just say, you should check where it says adopt amendment. Thank right. you. Right. So, so we're, we're voting on 1098, not amending. I move that we find uh, HB 1098 inexpedient to legislate. Is there a second? Yes. Okay. Representative Trelevin? 
second to it. And Mr. Clark, if you could uh, call the roll yeah, on sure. 1098 as uh, as an ICF. So the vote on uh, the motion on House Bill 1098 is ITL. Vice Chairman Piemonte. Uh, yes. Um, acting as the clerk, majority votes yes. We go to Representative Tripp. Yes. Representative Guthrie. Representative Lasalas. Yes. Representative Rhodes. Yes. Representative Melvin. Yes. Representative Ayer. Yes. Representative Power. Yes. Representative Trelevin. Yes. Representative Gilman. Yes. Representative Stavis. Yes. Representative Manjapudi. Yes. Representative Van. Yes. Representative Klee. Yes. Representative Gallagher. No. Representative Rung. Yes. Chair, the motion of ITL passes and seven. I vote, I vote oh, yes. You still want to vote? <laughs> I'm really trying to get you out of this, but. <laughs> so still, even with that vote, <laughs> the motion is 17 to 1, Mr. Chair. And without objection, I'll, I'll endeavor to put that on the consent. Okay. Uh, All right, the next uh, order of our business is going to be to take up <clears throat> House Bill 1070, which is relative to the default budget and official ballot jurisdiction. So, uh, Representative Lascelles, do you have a motion? Yes. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I would like to uh, uh, make a motion that we pass. Um, House Bill 1070. Okay, is there a second to that? I'd like to second that. Who's, who seconded it? Power. Representative Power. Yeah. Okay, we have a we have an amendment to uh, to the bill to 1070. The amendment. Oh, Okay. We should all should have a copy of the amendment. Do we, do we not have a copy? If you, if you want, we can stop and get a copy for you. Great. Okay. This, this amendment uh, oh. is. This is, this is amendment, amendment 07398. So we have a motion to pass. The amendment. We're getting ready to get to get a motion to pass the amendment. Okay, so uh, we have a motion and a second on the amendment. We don't. I move we adopt the uh, uh, amendment uh, 2022. Uh, there's a motion on the floor. Uh, who made that Is motion? there? Uh, Representative Lascelles, would you withdraw your, your motion? I would, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Would you make a withdrawal of the second? Representative Power, second. All right. So now we have an amendment to consider on House Bill 1070. Is there a motion to pass 1070? I not? move we adopt amendment 2022-0739-H to House Bill 1070. That's Representative Tripp. Is there a second? Representative Guthrie may second. Second. Okay, so we have a motion to OTP the amendment. And it's uh, been seconded. Is there any discussion? Yes, Representative Power. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to speak to the amendment 
39H to House Bill 1070. So this um, amendment simply corrects an error in the original bill on line 23 of page one. Um, there's a strikeout and that was um, st stricken out in error and it just puts that back in the language. That was not intended to be removed. I have questions, um, Representative Power, maybe you can help me. Um, when we had testimony, um, specifically we had from Ms. Heck at the New Hampshire Municipal Association, um, it, it appears there were multiple technicalities. And also uh, from Mr. N Nauer, um, he's supervisor of the Municipal Bureau at DRA. He also cited two court cases relative that this would be in conflict with court decisions made in 2016 and 2017. Um, I was just wondering, does this only correct that one uh, technicality or, or all of them? That is correct. The, the amendment only addresses that um, the strikeout on line 23. It does not address any of those um, points you raised. Okay. Um, with that, then I'm going to be opposed to the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I am uh, similar to Representative Runk. My note says, you know, it only affects SB two towns, 72 of them, and it and the DRA does not evaluate or amend default budget. So there is, it's, it's going to affect very focused, specific SB two towns and. Uh, in a negative way is my understanding. So because of that, I would oppose any, him. Any further discussion on the amendment? Okay, seeing no further discussion, we're gonna take a vote on whether or not we're gonna adopt this amendment. Uh, Mr. Clerk, you wanna take a roll? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I promise to try to remember you this time. Thank you. Uh, so the motion is ought to pass, uh, ought to adopt um, on 2022-0739H. And we start with Vice Chair Pimonte. Yes. Clerk is non-voting, and I am acting as the clerk, and I vote... Majority votes no. We move to Representative Tripp. Yes. Representative Guthrie. Yes. Representative Lasalas. Yes. Representative Rhodes. Yes. Representative Melvin. Yes. Representative Ayer. Yes. Representative Power. Yes. Representative Trelevin. No. Representative Gilman. No. Representative Stavis. No. Representative Manjaputi? No. Representative Van? Representative Klee? No. Representative Gallagher? No. Representative Rung? No. Uh, Chair Dolan? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair, that puts us at 9 to 9. Let me double check. Wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 to 9. The motion fails. Who's, uh, who's not here from the... The clerk. The clerk is not here. No, but from the... From the uh, oh, we're 100% here for the Democrat. Uh, yes, sir. So the motion is 9 to 9. 9 to 9. Um, so in my book, that means it failed. Um, so we'll have to... Uh, we'll, we'll come back to that. All right. Uh, well, Mr. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, I, I, can we do that? Can we just walk away from it? Uh, at this point, um, it, it, it failed. Yeah, the, well, the amendment failed. failed to be adopted. So now we're on the underlying okay, bill. Okay, we'll go, we'll go, you're right. We'll go to the. Uh, we the, need to uh, go to the underlying bill. We'll go to the bill. Yes, 
Chair. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. RSA 197 colon 6 refers to petition warrant articles, if I'm not mistaken. It's not clear to me why it's in statute, at, you know, currently. The default budget? No, it's it's on line 23. I'm looking at the House Bill 1070. Correct. And it talks about default budgets. So I guess I'm not sure what, what the point, the connection between the default budgets and what you just said. Yeah, exactly. So that being struck out. I, I don't understand why it's why it's there right now. If somebody could, um, does anybody have a comment? That can comment on that further and give explain. some other in. Mr. Chair, before this comment, I'm just asking: Was there a disposition on this bill first? Not yet. Okay, thank you. Anybody have any comment for Representative Power as, as to we're talking about this bill, which is which is relative to default budgets and official ballot jurisdiction. He has a, a concern about what we're voting on. Well, I, I was just going to make a motion, Mr. Chair. I well, move. Before we make a motion, we have the disposition that's on, already on the floor, which is. Right, Mr. These, Chair, the motion, uh, excuse me, the uh, adopting the amendment was a tie, so it failed. So we are left then with the bill, which at this point has no motion unless I am incorrect. Mr. Chair? Yes. Representative Power has a question about the bill itself. I can't answer it for you because default budgets make me have a headache. Yes, I'm Representative thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I apologize. I'm very confused as to what we're doing and where we are in the process, so um, right, ignore at, my, my inquiry. We're at House Bill 1070, and the, the amendment failed. So we're back to the base bill, and uh, we're, we're about to get a motion to disposition the bill, either OTP or ITL. Or there's one other option, but uh, and then you had your concern is is you're all set. Okay, what, what's the motion now? Yes, I move that um, House Bill 1070 is recommended for an expedient to legislate. Okay, so the motion is to ITL 1070. Is there? Yes. Oh, you have a second. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Motion and a second. Yes, Representative Seller. I think this bill is gets right to the fundamentals of why we have public discussion and public input on uh, budgeting in SB2 towns. The situation right now is that in the SB2 town, a budget, an operating budget is submitted to a budget committee. The budget committee does exhaustive work going line item by line item in public and going over the operating budget. If there is no control over what is in the default budget, then all that exhaustive work that went in by the budget committee is, is thrown aside if the default budget happens to be greater than the, than the proposed operating budget. And we've, in my particular case in our town, we have an SB2 situation and repeatedly, time and time again, the de default budget exceeds the proposed operating budget. It's supposed to be a fallback position, 
in case the operating budget do uh, doesn't pass. So I really think that there needs to be some sort of control over that, that default budget so it is indeed put back to where it was supposed to be, a fallback position. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My concern uh, with this bill, with this bill, uh, is parent three, less any reductions to an appropriation the governing body made in the proposed operating budget. As a member of the select board with a, in an SB2 town that has an official budget committee, I propose, my select board proposes a budget and then hands that to the budget committee. The default budget then would be based on the budget that I proposed. I see this, if this bill passes, as a way for a select board to pump that proposed budget up or, or flatten it out with no discretion, a proposed operating budget. So I could propose, my budget's $8 million. I could propose a $30 million operating budget that then becomes a default budget or less, it says less any reductions to the appropriate budget, excuse me. So I could go in there, somebody rogue could say, I'm gonna make that a $3 million budget. And that is the proposed budget that goes into default. I don't see there being discretion there. I'm proposing a responsible budget at that point that we hope then is adopted. I would like to see that being uh, what we are considering less or, or adjusted for any one-time appropriations as the DRA has set forth in statute. So my concern is over those words, proposed operating budget. It gives me grave concern. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have a problem with this budget. You know, we've been going through default budgets and stuff, and I think that there's oh, sorry. Uh, we've been uh, nudging at this default budget idea for a few years, and the idea that the default budget should always be lower can be uh, negated because of circumstances such as uh, the retirement of a uh, bond in that one year, uh, one year in the default budget. Let's see if I get this straight. Um, a proposed budget doesn't have that bond payment anymore, but the default budget would be based on the current fiscal year's budget, the active budget. This is taking three different budgets to make the default budget. Um, so the, sometimes the default budget will be higher because you've retired a debt in your proposed budget. Yeah, but about this particular bill, um, line nine, less any reduction in the appropriation the governing body made in the proposed operating budget, totally conflicts with line 18D and the definition of contracts, which call for uh, contracts previously approved in the amount so approved. So even if in your proposed budget you're approving something less, the default budget will go back to that year, the, the, the operating year that you're in, it'll go back to that contract price. So you don't want it in your operating, but your proposed budget, but you have to have it because it's contract. So it directly, it directly, I think, makes a circle of the um, line nine and line 18. It's not operable. Okay, uh, thank you. Any further discussion? Yes, Representative Ron. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I agree with what Representative Gilman said. I'm, I'm concerned with the the technical conflicts that this bill creates with language that's already in statute that's not addressed in the bill. Um, I definitely sympathize with Representative LaSalle's because uh, Merrimack is a Senate Bill 2 town and um, I think for the past several years our default budget's been greater than our proposed operating budget. Um, however, um, at the deliberative session the voters still have, the, they can uh, amend the proposed budget to be lower and that, so the voters on the election day still have the choice 
of do they want the lower, even if it's amended a deliberative session, if they want that budget amount or the default budget. So voters still have a choice. Um, and, and I think, you know, maybe we need to look more at the default budget to make sure there's a clean bill that doesn't propose conflicts. Um, but this, this bill doesn't really, um, I, I don't think it's going to be workable for some of those reasons that Representative Gilman brought up. Thank you. We have questions. Uh, well, we have two deliberative sessions. We have one for the town and one for the school district, and it depends what um, what what's on the warrant. Um, I think, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, um, we had a lot of people um, because there was, um, I, I forget what it was, Representative Biamonte, there, there was something that got the attention of people more that they were at the deliberative session. There's been some deliberative sessions when the, the people that had to be there, the school board, the budget committee, the attorney, the moderator, that numbered more than the, the, res the voters coming. But it really all depends on what's, you know, what is on the warrant, if there's anything specific. Typically, I think one year we had a, a, a warrant article uh, it, to replace the football field with artificial turf. The, those kind of things tend to draw up more people, but it's usually issue specific. Just follow up here. I, um, I found that uh, that handout that you gave me there was amazing. I didn't do that in my own house in my house. The boards pretty much agreed over a vote that didn't really work. Let me take the side for a minute. similar situation on the school board. And I know you mentioned there are other times like that that happen. The school board uh, difference between the, um, the default budget for the school board, the default budget was 7 million, let's say 900,000, and the actual budget was 7 million, uh, what, $100,000 less. So, um, you know, they gave you no option to choose. And I think that's what this bill is doing, is giving you the option to choose. And um, because of that reason, I'll be, I'll be for it. Any further discussion? We have a motion on the floor to ITL. It's been seconded. <laughs> Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'd like to ask the, the clerk to take the roll, please. No. Yes. No. 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 Yes. 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 Yes, he voted yes. I'm voting no. <laughs> Ten. The vote is ten yeays. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten yeas, eight nays. The motion ITL passes. Okay, so what's going on next? Are we, uh, can, can we done the, uh, 
Those just the time. Sir? We did this one, right? Those just the time. Not yet. We're going to 1081? No, we didn't do that one. But then we're not going to do that one, I don't think. Right? Okay, we're going to wait on that? Yeah, I think so. All right, uh, the next bill we're going to take up is HB 1119. I have an amendment to that bill. So, Mr. Chair, I uh, move that we adopt Amendment 2022-0764H. The motion is made to adopt the amendment, and there's a second. Any discussion on the amendment? Yes. Yes. Um, Mr. Chair, for the committee, if they remember back to the public hearing, there was some uh, question as to garbage bags that might be purchased, like hefty garbage bags or something. So um, this amendment clarifies that the intent is um, referring to bags that are used at the point of sale at a, at a merchant. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Question to the amendment, uh, representative who brought the amendment. This will address the issue of our hefty bags are single use or not, right? So making it point of sale would be at the checkout counter. Correct. Thank you. One thing I had, I had a, a thought. Uh, this uh, this amendment talks about plastic bags and paper bags. Was that the intention? Include paper bags? Um, I I believe it was. It's not an or situation: plastic bags or paper bags. It's a either plastic. If if a municipality wants to. Uh, regulate the distribution of plastic bags and paper bags they can but it, it one uh, regulating one can exclude the other how, how do you interpret that, that um, let's say I mean you know in my town this isn't going to apply this is enabling legislation but suppose there's a town that wants the, the, the business to ask the customer do you want a bag and if you do want a bag, do you want a plastic bag or a paper bag? That's regulating the distribution. There might be some towns that elect to ban both paper and plastic. There might be some that choose to ban one or the other. Um, it just is, is, there's bags made out of plastic or paper. It gives the, the municipality the option of, of regulating that at the point of sale. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Isn't this the enabling legislation which attempts to reduce the single-use bag by uh, offering the choice of bringing your own reusable bags at the point of sale, hence the single-use plastic or paper is not ending up in our landfill? I can't 
I can't speak for the sponsor, but I suspect, the, the prime sponsor, but I suspect that was her intent. Um, I signed on to this bill because it is enabling. And if you look at other things that are in that area of the statute, we're allowing municipalities to regulate tattoo parlors and um, noise and uh, political contributions in local elections, retail display of martial arts weapons. So. I'm thinking if, if municipalities, why not enable them to make a decision about point of sale bags? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm uh, I'm wondering what your definition of distribution is. Would that uh, uh, include sale of paper bags? I'm sorry, Representative. Yeah, I, I think so. I think distribution could re require sale. It could be the giving of the bag. Um, it's just how that transfer of the bag is made at the point of sale to the customer, that, that process and anything that would be involved in it. So, the, Mr. Chair, I yeah. have a follow-up. The, the reason I ask that is uh, I believe it during the uh, testimony that people were talking about how the, uh, the paper bags was included because there might be a, 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 uh, some thoughts about requiring a, a 10 cent deposit on paper bags in the future. So that's, I, I don't know if it, a deposit is a sale, but uh, it, it would seem to limit the distribution of paper bags. So that's why I ask, is distribution just uh, when plastic bags are given to the customers or does it include sale of paper bags, or does it include just deposit on a paper bag? I, I'm, I'm reading the word distribution in a broad sense, so it would be inclusive of any transaction, whether it's given at a cost or not. Um, so, like, like I said before, my, in, my intent with this was just to allow municipalities to make decisions that they think are in their best interest. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I think that the issue that we're trying to do here is allow jurisdictions to make whatever decisions. So, for example, under distribution, I would imagine that this would include charging you a nickel for a paper bag, charging you a nickel for a plastic bag, saying that we're not going to let you use plastic bags anymore, whatever the local jurisdiction decides among itself is reasonable, um, is the intent of the bill as I understand it. And as Representative Rung says, it's enabling legislation. Each individual town would have to decide what they wanted to do. Mr. Chair? Okay, the, uh, Mr. Chair, I have. Uh, Representative Mangatini. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I know back in, uh, I'm dating back, I don't know how many years ago, grocery stores in my area would say, if I brought my own reusable bag, I would get uh, five, dollars, five cents of credit at the check, you know, so that was an incentive to bring my own bag. And, uh, but it, it's not happening, so this, in, that enabled the use of, or reduced the use of me getting reusable uh, plastic or paper. So that incentive charging five cents for a plastic bag, one time use plastic or paper, or giving five cents credit for bringing your own reusable bag, so. Any other discussion? I, I'm having a little bit of difficulty with the base legislation. It's not the amendment, the amendment didn't change, but it's the distribution of single use plastic bags and paper bags to customers. I, I would be more comfortable if it said, Either or, or it gave some gave the retailers a an option to use one or the other. Not the, right now, the way it's written, it, it has to exclude both. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I I actually think that's not what it says. I think what it says is individual jurisdictions may regulate the description distri distribution of both, and that's my word single-use plastic bags and paper bags. 
So a jurisdiction, and the, it's the jurisdiction that makes the decision, not the retailer. The jurisdiction can decide that they want to le legislate against the use of plastic bags, that they want to legislate against them by requiring that uh, merchants charge for them, or they could legislate against paper bags the same way, or they could legislate against both. That's what I think is happening here. So we're saying that, and, and there's an argument to be made that paper bags are worse than, than plastic bags. They're heavier, they use more materials to produce them, uh, they don't actually degrade as fast as we think they do. So I think that allowing towns to make a decision about both plastic and paper makes sense. Representative Tripp. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm gonna use uh, Representative Band's uh, uh, method of parsing the, the sentence to uh, bring up a, another issue, I think. Uh, she read re regulating the distribution of single-use plastic bags and plastic and paper bags. That sentence could also be read to regulating the distribution of single-use plastic bags and paper bags. So does this include single-use paper bags? Yes, my, my reading of it, if you can't get any other, any other reading out of that, it's just that. Right, thank you. I'm looking at the bill as introduced. Letter Q, regulating the distribution of single-use paper bags and, or rather, single-use plastic bags and paper bags to customers. I don't see you can read it any other way other than both are, are going to be, are going to be uh, Mr. regulated. Chair, yeah. Why are we discussing the bill when we're supposed to be discussing the amendment? That's what's on the table right now. What's that? I didn't hear what you said. All right, never mind. Thank you. Sorry for bubbling. So you, you've now piqued my interest. So we're, <coughs> we're at uh, 1119. That one line. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Yes. The one line is all there is, and the only change in the amendment was to add at the end of the sentence, at point of sale, so that it's clear that what we're talking about is the bag you get when you buy your groceries or your cosmetics or whatever it is. So yeah. we're, that's what the amendment says, and that's where we are. Representative Tripp. So, uh, so we are talking about single-use paper bags. So, if there was, if there's paper bags for sale at the store other than single-use paper bags, how would you differentiate between those? Can you say that again, Representative? Well, since we decided that this this bill only limits the distribution of single-use plastic bags and single-use paper bags. Is there, if there's paper bags available at the store that are other than single-use, how would the store differentiate between the two? Um, I'm trying to understand your question, Representative Tripp. If, so at the point of sale, you're saying if there are paper bags there available that are not um, single-use. Is that correct? That's true. Um, so, I, you know, I, I'm trying to understand if there's even anything that exists, a paper bag that exists that isn't single use, intended for single use. I mean, I get single use paper bags at some places and I reuse them, but they're not intended to be uh, multi-use. They're intended, it's like, you know, I, I shop at a grocery store. If I get a single-use plastic bag, um, it's, I, I, I reuse that, but it's not intended to be multi-use. It's only intended to be single-use. So I'm, I guess I'd have to have, I'd have to be aware that multi-use paper bags are, are, are available.
Representative Sleeve. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This this amendment, as has been pointed out, um, while we are talking about single use plastic bags, so this amendment, the only thing it changes from the bill is the words to customers from that to at point of sale. That's really what the discussion should be. I think the and or single use and so on should be more for the bill itself. I think we should just discuss whether or not the <coughs> at point of sale. And I think that this amendment was just to clarify because there was a lot of confusion during the, the public hearing um, when it said to customers, was it if customers bought leaf bags or customers bought hefty bags in a box and so on. So this was just talking about the, the bags that are given at a point of sale. And I think that's all this amendment really talks about. The bill itself does talk about the and and the single use, et cetera. But the only change from this to this is those very, very words at the end, to customers versus at point of sale. And I think the at point of sale is the um, clarifying. So regardless of how you feel about the bill, to pass the amendment would at least do clarifying and then however the bill turns out, it turns out. Thank you. Uh, Representative uh, Sullivan, do you have comments? Representative Power? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my my um, comment pertained to the bill itself, so I will defer. Okay. Uh, Representative Nigeri? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Slee has my point. Any, other, any further right. comments? I just don't understand that they have these uh, stations set up to collect the plastic bags and they, oh, sorry, come on, yeah. To collect the plastic bags and they use them for, uh, say, for example, the Trex uh, boards that uh, they use for decks and stuff. I mean, those are extremely expensive and why wouldn't we not... Uh, uh, use these uh, collection stations uh, more uh, frequently. And, and, and then, oh, I know it's up to an individual, but why wouldn't they be used uh, more often than not? You know, I mean, I don't see, if, if they're promoted for a, even at the transfer stations, they could put a 10-yard uh, a dumpster or an 8-yard dumpster there specifically for those. And uh, I think it would be a good uh, avenue uh, instead of uh, doing what we're doing now. Hey, uh, Representative Sullivan. Uh, Representative Davis. Davis was before me. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh, boy, this feels like deja vu all over again. <laughs> um, in the last session, we had a plastic bag ban bill that was essentially the same as this one, except that it was not enabling legislation. It was a statewide ban on the use right. of single plastic bags. Um, this is fundamentally different because it's just enabling. The fact of the matter is that cities and towns could probably do this already if they wanted to. It just would make it easier when interacting with retail outlets, if there was something in statute that enabled them to do it, if they so cho chose to do it. We are not talking about instituting a plastic or paper ban, bag ban. We are simply talking about allowing municipalities to choose to go that route if their voters wish to do so. Any further discussion? Yes, Representative Sullivan. Is it appropriate for me to call the question? Um, no, it's appropriate, but I may not choose to uh, Correct. call it. Correct. Well, I'd move to call the question. Okay. Uh, I, I hear you, but I want to make sure that we have completed our discussion on this point that it's rather yeah, con controversial, can be controversial. Yeah. I have one more thing I'd like to ask. Um, I don't know. I drive around quite a bit, and I could think, and all it, I mean, I, I just don't see these plastic bags causing uh, so much pollution and, and, and things like that. I mean, we had someone last year pull these from the, the river. Um, you know, 
I think I saw one in a tree in the wintertime. One. And it, and it boils down to the fact that, you know, uh, people are basically responsible. You have some that are irresponsible, and those are the ones that are going to pollute with these plastic bags. But, you know, maybe increasing the fines on them or something like that may be an alternative than, than putting a border, uh, uh, putting a, an order in that it's mandatory to use plastic bags. I don't... Uh, I don't think that. This isn't mandatory. This is enabling. I'm sorry? This is not mandatory on anyone. I have it's to, enabling. You have to I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Shared. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to be so formal, but we, we, we uh, lose our, our uh, habits quickly if we're not careful. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, with, with due respect, this is not a mandate. It was the mandate in the last session that went down in flames. This is enabling legislation. It's simply a, if you want to, you might consider. But it is simply not a ban in no way, shape, or form. Yeah, you want to make on a the comment? Way, you know, it's on the way to, to the, the next session. We get a ban on it. You know what I mean? So why even open the door now? Uh, we had a comment. Was it Representative Ron? Yeah, I just wanted to address Mr. Piedmonti's concern. Um, I, I think we we have to look at the bill at the face value. It's enabling legislation. I voted against the statewide ban the, that bill. Um, I don't think I, I, I'll, I'll I'll pretty much bet this would never fly in Merrimack. But I'm not going to assume that I know better than other communities. Um, other communities, in Merrimack too, we have a lot of responsibility on solid waste management. And we, ha we spend a lot of money on solid waste management. And we heard in testimony how sometimes these bags cause expensive repairs on the, um, the, the sorting machines and stuff. Um, Merrimack would probably absorb that repair cost. But there might be a town that doesn't. I want them to be enabled to make this decision if they want to. If they don't want to, like my town, they won't. But it just, it, it's enabling legislation. I, and I, you know, I want to reiterate that we need to be careful about presuming that we know what's best for other com for communities. I think they know what's best for themselves. Representative Van. Yeah, one of the things that came up in testimony was that Portsmouth has, I believe it was Portsmouth, has in fact enacted a bag ruling about what kind of bags they can use. And they did it knowing that they were way out on the, on the you know, tippy end of the branch and maybe there was not statutory authority to do that. So what this does is gives those communities which wish to do that the statutory authority to do so. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, two responses. One to Representative Piermonte's uh, the recycled decking, plastic decking, that each community has chosen how to do their recycling. If it is a single stream, these plastic bags can contaminate the stream and the whole recycling uh, bulk is rejected. And some communities do sort it, and that's more expensive, but it hopefully clean, you know, gives them a cleaner uh, stream of recycled plastic. And these single-use plastic bags do lend itself for that uh, particular recycling. And Vermont, our neighboring state, Vermont, does that. Having said that, this is an enabling legislation gives each community to ch uh, choose how they want to do it. In Nashua, we have a mixed stream, and we have, you know, we've been doing recycling curbside, but mixed stream has created some issues because the recycled material is being rejected because of some mixed, uh, especially the plastics, and don't uh, put everything in one. So I think this at least helps 
each communities to be responsible for their own waste, solid waste. And also I want to bring people's attention to online support and oppose. I know it's a small number, but 118 in support of this bill and 11 in opposition. So there is a need, or at least the citizens have spoken to some extent, in my view. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, additional comments? U.S. Representative Tripp. I know this is going out on a limb, but uh, would you consider uh, the plastic bags that uh, bread comes in to be a single-use bag? Well, I use them to put dirty shoes in. But uh, <laughs> so again, I'm, I'm getting used. No, they're not at the point of sale, is which is what this amendment is. Well, I, I, I do believe that plastic bags that bread comes in are single-use bags, and they are at the point of sale. I, I think so, so th th that's not what we're talking about. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, the, my last comment is that <clears throat> the mixed stream issue is definitely an issue. And I know in my community, if you put um, these types of bags in your recycling buckets, what happens at the recycling center, they reject the entire bucket. And they and the community gets an upcharge every time that happens. <clears throat> you, what happens locally is the uh, in the in the uh, factory stream, as I'm told, is these bags get caught in the in the crunching phase, if that's the right term, and they jam up the machine. So I, I am I am uh, uh, sympathetic to that whole issue of mixed streaming and and uh, uh, making the communities pay more because of the mixed stream that's uh, not well uh, supervised. <coughs> On the other hand, I, I still haven't re reconciled in my mind <coughs> how two communities side by side, relatively the same size, and let me use Londonderry and Hudson, they're about the same size communities. If one town has a restriction has voted in the restriction for plastic bags and, and paper bags, but the other town said, no, we don't want to do that. What does that mean for the business of the, of, that those two towns are competing for? Will, will we be driving customers to Hudson if, it, if London already takes the, the option or the other way? Uh, and that, that's a concern that I have when we, when we leave it to be enabled like this is uh, you, we may see businesses uh, be, being caught um, at a disadvantage because their community is going to choose how to disposition these bags, uh, whether they be plastic or whether they be paper. Uh, yes, Representative Staver. So there is nothing in the statute that dictates what businesses might need to do or not do. If, if a business in a neighboring community just to go with your example, decides not to ban these single-use bags and the neighbor next door does, doesn't say anything about what the businesses in that community have to do. They can go along, they can decide not to use single plastic bags anyway. It's a private business. The state doesn't tell them what to do. True. Yes, Representative Power. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To be clear, this, this bill be. Well, can I speak to the bill or the amendment? Uh, we're, we're, um, let's see. Have we made a motion on the amendment? Yeah, I guess we have. So please talk to the amendment at, at this point. So speaking to the amendment, that would limit my comments to the, I guess, phrase at point of sale. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so I will defer once again. Okay, I think uh, U.S. Representative Vassello. I just um, I could I could understand the chairman's point about the uh, the stream issue. I can I can see that, but my question is the practicality of how this could be implemented, because if you have two convenience stores, a conv it, to me grocery stores are not an issue. 
people people bring their own bags to grocery stores, and so paper and plastic is no longer a big deal to me. But convenience store, when you just bop in and get two or three items, and if they say, do you want a bag? Okay, they don't give you an option of paper or plastic. They say, do you want a bag? Okay, and in most cases, the bag that they offer you is a plastic bag. They don't offer you paper and plastic. So a convenience store, to me, it would, would really be hit on this because they have to offer, generally speaking, when people go into a convenience store, they're not going to bring their own bag. You know, you're going to just go in and pick something up. And, and if there are too many items to carry out, you're going to need to put it in a bag. So what kind of bag are you going to put it in? Well, from a practicality standpoint, convenience stores are going to want to offer plastic bags because they take up less room and they're cheaper and everything. So I'm not sure how, if a town, a municipality, said no more plastic bags. We're, we're done with plastic bags. So how could that be implemented in a convenience store situation? Uh, Representative Ron? Gonna, I, I, by, by the way, I'm, gonna, I'm getting close to three minutes. Representative <laughs> Levin's motion. Well, um, I, I think the, I, uh, to address Representative LaSalle's point, I, I think that language in the amendment that talks about regulating the distribution, I think that's general enough that a town may make a decision that if, if they are going to, let's say, um, require grocery stores to um, ask if, if a customer wants a bag in the first place, or if they're gonna say no plastic bags at all, they could exempt convenience stores. There's nothing in this that says that it's gonna be a blanket regulation. I think it gives them the opportunity to decide, okay, we're gonna regulate the distribution, um, but it doesn't say for everybody. It could just be for stores of certain size. Very similar to what's already in statute. If you look at one uh, N regulating noise, in Merrimack anyway, we don't, ban noise, we do regulate it for certain hours. Um, and, you know, so some businesses that might create a lot of noise at night, they're, they're out of luck. But, um, you know, towns have a lot of different noise ordinances. So I would expect that, you know, adding item Q about the bags, there could be a lot of different options under that too. Thank you. Um, at this point, question uh, we've had plenty of discussion and uh, if my memory serves right which it might not but we're at the point where we have an amendment that needs to be voted on right thank you and uh, that uh, that uh, motion is ought to pass the amendment ought to pa uh, we had to ad adopt the amendment okay uh, so the motion is to adopt the amendment as presented uh, Mr. Clerk, would you take a roll on that? Okay, uh, Vice Chairman Piamonti. No. Clerk Hertz, no. Representative Tripp? No. Representative Guthrie? <coughs> Representative Salas? No. Uh, Representative Rhodes? No. Representative Melvin? No. Representative Ayer? Representative Power? No. Rep Representative Majori? Yeah. Yes. Representative Trey Levin? Yes. Representative Gilman? Yes. Representative Stavis? Yes. Representative Megapudi? Yes. Representative Van? Yes. Representative Klee? Yes. Representative Gallagher? Yes. Representative Brown? Yes. And uh, Chairman Dolan? Yes. The adopt amendment motion fails. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'd like to make a motion. Yes, please. 
to ITL 1119. Motions been made to, I, to ITL AC 1119. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Power. Is there a discussion on that? Seeing none, those are going to stay as, could you click off your mic for a minute? I ask the clerk to take a roll on the motion. The motion is granted. And this is the motion to What's the IT? Excuse me. Uh, ITL on. House Bill 1119. Uh, Representative Piemonte? Yes. Clerk votes yes. Representative Tripp? Yes. Representative Guthrie? Yes. Representative Lasalas? Yes. Representative Rhodes? Yes. Representative Melvin? Yes. Representative Vea? Yes. Representative Power? Yes. Representative Majori? No. Representative Trey Levin? No. Representative Gilman? No. Representative Stavis? No. Representative Magaputi? No. Representative Van? No. Representative Klee? No. Representative Gallagher? No. Representative Rung? No. Chairman Dolan? Okay, so uh, with that motion failing, we have one more bill to take up, and that's 1081, which is the, the discussion of the dissolution of a village district. The ITL passed. Uh, 10 to 9. Okay, so the, the, the next and last bill for today, is I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to re take a recess and we'll pick up that bill tomorrow. Uh, that's uh, HB 1081. Okay, so 1081 we'll take up first thing tomorrow. And with that, we're done for the day. Representative Trelevin, it's a pleasure to see your smiling face. <laughs> Plus, you are naked from the neck up. No, no, no. <laughs>